Hey guys, welcome to the corner. <coughs> nice to see you. Oh, I'm putting my hand up under there and there's no, you know, I'm not there yet. <laughs> Hi everybody. Hi Kiki, Carrie and PJ. I don't know which one it is either. It's one or the other. <coughs> so today we are going to make this ornament. Hi guys, and I don't know what's up with my 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 camera's being derpy tonight. So hopefully that flashy flashy stops. Hi Kathleen, Penny, <clears throat> and yep, everybody else. Okay, there we go. Hi everybody. Squirrel's here. He's getting ready to go to bed because he's got to work. Go back to work tomorrow, and I have no idea what's up with my webcam over there. It's all doing weird things. <coughs> so first I gotta show this thing right here this is the best thing ever if y'all don't know what this is let's see if I can get any guesses on what that is can you do you guys know what this is it's, it's heaven why is my webcam doing that I don't understand that derpy derpy take, this off real quick. take what off that it's just a blank mat now oh that might be yeah, look at that it works now I was trying to focus on it. And it was, yeah. Do you guys know what this is? Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. <coughs> oh. Yes, I, we're back. I've got a sinus infection going on. And I think a squirrel gave it to me. I didn't give it to you. Hi, Skylar. Hi, Pate. Yes, it is. It's a head massager. Squirrel is just using it because um, I have a sinus headache going on. And he has got a really bad sinus infection. Yeah. But this is the best thing ever. I got it at Dollar Tree like seven years ago. Best dollar I've ever spent, let me tell you. <clears throat> okay, so those of you just coming in, let me switch my view again really quick. This is what we're going to make today. I'm going to show you guys how to make this. It's a quilted heirloom ornament and it's no sew. So what you're going to need for this, <coughs> excuse me, are these styrofoam balls. They're three inch styrofoam balls. Well, they're not exactly three inches. It's like 2.9 or something like that is what the package was. I got these at Joann's. Um, yeah, it's like these are the smooth styrofoam balls. I prefer to use these over the other funky ones that they have. Um, they're 2.9 inches, but this is the size. Oh, you can put that over there, please. You're going to need fabric of your choice. And I am actually going to use the same fabric that I have in that the picture, which is this fabric here. And would you bring me the white one that's over there, please? <clears throat> these are actually custom orders um, this is a custom order and this is the other one and this is metallic it's metallic um, fabric <coughs> excuse me thank you squirrel you're going to need what you're going to do is will you hand me the other stack that's not ironed please. Yes. All right. So what you're going to need is whatever you want to use for your colors. So let me transition this picture again really quick. So if you notice, we have white in the middle, then blue, and then it goes back to the white. Those are the three colors you're going to choose. So if you don't want three, just the two colors like that, <clears throat> you can choose a third option. Me, I'm using just the two. So, <coughs> what you're going to do is you're going to cut. Where's my paper? I had a paper. Oh, we're right here. All right. There we go. All right. So, for your top, the top one, you're going to have four squares. And these squares are three inches by three inches. So, you're going to cut four for the top on one top and then four for the other one so you're going to need eight let me cut this little trim off there 
<coughs> you're going to need eight for your center pieces. <laughs> Pixie. Then the next one you're going to do is going to be the blue. So for that one, you're going to need eight pieces. So you're going to have a top and a bottom. So you're going to have your top and then your middle and then your other color. So you're going to need four of your first one in the middle. Then you're going to need eight of the next one and eight of the next white. So one half of the ball is going to have four, eight, and eight. Okay? Then when you get that side done, you're going to rotate it. So for me, I have to have a total uh, for one ball. I have to have, what was it, um, 16 blue, and then I had to have, oh, eight, <laughs> eight, eight. I know what your total was, but I don't know. I don't know what for one was either, but, um, let's see, that's eight, 16, 16 plus eight. Okay, so then you're going to need 32. 24. 24? Yeah, 24. So you'll need 24. Hi, Laura. Nice to see you. So then you're going to need 24 of the white. <clears throat> Let me get Pixie really quick. She wants to say hi to everybody. Come here, Lulu. She jumped at the door like there was somebody out there. Probably. There was nobody out there. All right, come here. You want to say hi to everybody? She's fixing to be in heat, so she's kind of menopausal right now. Or not menopausal, but bitchy. <laughs> Tell everybody hi. See, I have missed you all. Say, I have missed you all. Tell everybody hi. Oop, oop, yeah. She, might, she only went pee when I took her out, but. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> she's so funny. <laughs> yeah, um, you can change the, whoops, wrong way. You can change the colors. Like, so I need eight for the top and bottom, 16 blue, and then 16 more white. So that's your total, total squares. And what you're going to do, I iron mine. This one didn't get ironed very well, but I have to iron these ones yet. You're going to iron them to get all the wrinkles out. And what I do is I go through and I get all, I have four bulbs I have to do for this order. So what I do is I cut all my squares out. Then I go through and iron each set. Here's my other four, three sets. So I'll go through and iron them. And I'll iron them this way. Hi, Tom. We love you. And then I iron them again this way, and I make squares, and then I iron it flat. After I get all of them done, I stick them in a clip like this <coughs> to keep them together. So then I know which set goes with what. Okay, and then <coughs> you're going to need three... However many strips or balls you're going to do, you're going to need to cut a strip that's three inches wide and what I did was I had extra from my squares so I just held it here and you're going to fold that under. You need your glue, hot glue gun or you can just use the pins but you're going to fold that under. And when you're done, you'll see how I do it, but it's going to wrap around. So you're going to want extra. You don't have to have as much extra. I think mine are 11 inches, just over 11. Yeah, about 11 and a half, give or take. <clears throat> because once I get all the squares on there, it is going to kind of puff the ball up a tad bit. So I have leeway. So you want enough room to where you can fold up underneath. And what you're going to do is you're going to iron this in half. And then you're going to open it back up. And then you're going to fold it in 
where your center crease is right there from folding it in half, you're going to fold the edges in and you're going to iron that. And it's going to go on your ball like this. Then you're going to need a ribbon for a bow on top. If you pre don't want to add a bow, that's optional. I add bows. And then this we're going to actually put around the center of the fabric. And I'll show you here in the picture so you can see. There on the picture you can see where I have a piece of ribbon on the outside of the blue there that's wrapped around. <laughs> oh, Tom can't forget Judy. Oh, Judy, I got something from you today in the mail. Thank you. I'll take a picture of it later. I got home and from going to town with my mom this morning, and then Squirrel and I had to go do some errands. And, um, oh, that didn't sound good. And then we, um, had to, we didn't get home till like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, it was late. But, um, so yeah. And some of y'all have seen it already. Here is the polymer or Sculpey, whatever clay you use. But here's the Sculpey clay squirrel that I made. For squirrel. This is the first one I ever, Pixie. This is the first one I ever done. And I made a chicken for Mama Bee, which I don't know where it went. I have it. I, I put a string on it. If you like it, then you put a string on it, right? <laughs> where did I put it? Oh, here it is, right here. Here is the chicken. This is the first thing I ever made out of the clay, besides my roses. But I made this little chicken ornament. For Mama B. It's the cutest thing ever. And then I made Mary Forrester. These are for her. I still got a finish. This is her little, little little Miss Hen. And I also made... Oh, that's why I can't see nothing. I made this one for her too. She didn't see it yet, but surprise. <laughs> this is Mrs. Patchwork Hen. She's got a little bit of patchwork going on. So this is the other one. Um, but I'm going to make a few more of the hens to send to Mary. And then I got a bunch of other things we're going to make. <coughs> I did make a poop emoji. But its mouth fell off. I got to redo the mouth. But here is the poop emoji. He looks like a polypoop. poop. So yeah, <laughs> it's been fun. And tomorrow, I will be going live tomorrow and you don't want to miss it because I am going to show how I do from start to finish my unicorn ornaments. And... I'm going to have some stuff already done pre-made, like I'm going to have the horns done because that way I don't have to wait for them to bake and so forth. Um, and then I'll have the ears cut out, but I'm going to show how I did this because I was asked to do a tutorial on it, but instead I figured I would just do a live tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. We're going to make ornaments tomorrow. I will let him know as soon as he comes back in, Mary. He had to take Pixie out. Hi, Kathy. Um, probably around 6 or 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'll probably go on probably around 7 p.m. Um, because Squirrel gets home at 5 and we have to eat dinner. <coughs> I don't know where my roses are right off that. I moved them earlier. I put everything in a dish, and I don't know where I put the dish, so I can't show you the roses, but. All right, so you're going to need glue sticks, a glue gun, 
That's optional. You can use pins to pin everything or uh, to pin this part on. This is what the glue sticks used for. Um, I, I don't use my pins for that. You're going to need dress pins. These are called dressmaker pins. And your each each ornament takes 200 pins. So that's why I use the hot glue gun to glue that around the bulb when it's done. And these are just they're called dressmaker pins. Let me show you the package again really quick. <coughs> they are it's a this is a 750 count. Because I have to make four bulbs and it's going to be 800 pins. So this they're called dressmaker pins and they're just little straight pins with a flat rounded, kind of like a rounded tip on the end. So you're going to need those. If you have a thimble, get it. You're going to need it because your finger will get sore. So you need those. I like to use these floral pins to pin my ribbon on the top. When I make my bow. So I like to use these for that. And I brought this out because this is my hot glue gun holder. For my hot glue, not gun holder, but my glue holder. I couldn't find my bag of hot glue uh, sticks. So I brought this out and then I found my bag. So that's what this is. A lot of glue sticks. Okay. And you're asking if you can do uh, like an every 30 minute reminder for the <laughs> auction. Um, the auction will come up automatically in the chat with Nightbot, yes. The auction is going to be... No, as far as the day that we do it, I think is what they're saying. For, like, the notification that we're going on. Huh? You mean remind everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be setting up and stuff early and whatever. So, yeah. But, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, um, updating the, the group page. Um... One thing that we were doing for the auction that we are not able to finish is the suitcase journals. You want to go grab them? They're over there. Um, we have to do the journal. We, we can do the journals, but the suitcase, to carry them in, we cannot get them to hold the paint. It won't hold the gesso. Uh, it keeps breaking off. I, we re repainted it several times. I've gessoed it. I've put tape on it. The tape cracks. So what I'm going to do is I've got all the dimensions down for this. And we're actually going to make them from scratch. So it'll be a little easier. So the journals will be auctioned off. But um, I'm going to do those separate. And then uh, we'll end up whoever gets those journals um when we make these i'm going to make another set so we'll add those later <coughs> uh cool patty yeah i'm gonna have quite a few um yeah kiki we sanded them before we even started doing anything on them Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in. That goes to that. I'm going to set this in my pile. So I need one, two, uh, three, and four. Did we try spray paint? Uh, no, we did not try spray paint. I didn't even think about that. The way the other paints peeled up, I would assume that spray paint. Probably... Yeah, I did. I yeah, I figured this that would uh the spray paint would peel up, and I don't know how well Mod Podge or decoupage stuff would stick to that either. So I'm gonna separate these into my piles. I need. So I have my top and my bottom. I know I need underpants, Mary. I still don't understand that. Okay. Underpants are basically when, like, if you remember Melissa's video she did the other day where she was altering the book and she was ripping pages and putting papers down on top of the page? 
they're the underpants of the stuff on top. It helps to gotcha. stick in your book. Yeah. I have chipboard and stuff that I could make another suitcase. And we got all the inners for that, but. Okay, so I've got my stacks here. And what I like to do is, there's no right or wrong way where you start on this. Um, I like to start in the center, though, as best as I can. Let's see if I can zoom it in. It's good. Um, on the bottom, there's like a little... Um, oh, hello. There's an indent right there. And then if you roll it, right there... Is it right there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right there is like this weird looking... Like, I don't know. It's a weird little bumpy. It's a bump. But right there is where I like to start. Because that's going to be my center. And so when I'm done, my third row should roughly be around where the seam is on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all have them. It's all part of it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Lori Marie says to use um, underpants. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> yep, a belly button. It's, yeah, it's like, it looks like a flower, but it's not. So, because white is going to be my inside, so I gotta put these how I need them. Alright, so I'm going to start from one end and work my way one side, and then I'm going to work on the other side. Nope, that ain't going to work. I was hoping that was going to work. <coughs> I don't know what's in that. It'll work, though. Yeah, it's fine. You can dump it out. No. No. That. All right, I'm going to use a yogurt cup to kind of sip that. Oh, there we go. That works. All right, so you're going to take, let's get over here. Stay. Move these out because I don't want to be grabbing from the wrong pile. So I want these piles here. I'm going to open my pins. Make sure I keep this into view here. So you're going to open up, you're going to basic, if you don't iron these, you can do it without ironing them. But you're going to open it up and you're going to find the center right here. Right there where the center is. And you're going to put your needle right in the center of that. And you're going to push it all the way down. So just like that and that's sticking out the back. You're going to fold this over. Your needle will kind of like be laying a specific way and basically like you're going to want it to go up. So I'm going to flip this around because that's just how it's wanting to lay. So you're going to find the center and you're just going to push that in there like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold one end in. Quit moving. I'm just going to stick a pin right there really quick. <clears throat> you're going to fold one end in, and then you're going to press it down. And find the edge. You don't want to pull it really tight, but you're going to want it tight. This is where a thimble comes in handy. But I couldn't find mine. So you're just going to push that pin down in there. And the same thing on that side. You're going to press that down. Stick your pin in there. I usually just stick my pin in there to hold it in case I got to move it a little bit. If you get a little opening right there, that is okay. Don't freak out. I need something to push those in there.
Oh, what can I use? What can I use? Oh, I'll use this. Okay. Get the little no. on that thing might be able to. No, that's alright. Because it won't slip off of that. That's alright. My nails broke, so I can't use my nails. And that's what you do. Just like that. <clears throat> then you're going to turn it around. Grab another needle. <laughs> yeah, it's an Audi. <laughs> and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to find your center. Poke it through. And this one wants to lay, let's see. I'm going to I'm going to try to follow my folds. And so I'm going to line this up right where that other one is. And I want to keep this as straight as I can in line with each other. So I'm going to fold it down and put my pin Ooh, a cap. Oh, that's a good idea, Mary. Thank you. Oh, that's too big of a cap. But, yeah, that would work. This is the first one I saw. <laughs> All the other ones are in the bedroom. Or, well, not, not oh, the bedroom, but the craft room. In the craft room on the computer desk. Or, well, the computer table. Ouch. I was going to pick up a thimble today, but I was like, oh, I got mine at home. But, of course, I can't find it. Oh, off the marker will work. Well, that might that might be you no. Know, that my finger won't fit into that one, but um, I can't hear you. Are they the same size? Oh wait, I got one right here. This one won't work. No, this one this one's smaller though. That one'll work. Stand right there. Okay. All right, which side was I on? This one. All right, so I got to push these down in there. These pins will not be noticeable when you get going. And these don't really take that long. The longest process of this whole thing is cutting the fabric, getting the fabric ready to go. Yeah, I tried the Sharpie cap. I actually could just push it upside down and do it, but this one's got a hole in there, so I wouldn't be able to use that one. If you're using pa uh, fabric that's got like a directional design to it, you got to be careful with that when you do these. You kind of got to just watch how you fold it. And then this one's going to go here in the center. And this is where it gets tricky because you want to make sure you got enough to cover that opening right there. So this is where it kind of gets tricky to lining it up. I always pull it, my corner down there and then I pull my other corner down and work from that. Because you don't want your ball to show below it. Okay. Just want to keep your corner lined up. It takes a bit to finagle, but you'll get it. I guess we're being raided. Okay. Hi, everybody. Oh, 
<laughs> Every time I see the word raid, I think of them commercials. Raid! <laughs> oh, okay. Sometimes if it doesn't want to, if it, like if I do that and it bunches up there, I will move it over a little bit and it's okay because this will be covered. So you can crisscross like over the edge of that. It's okay. Because that will be covered by the next layer. Tomorrow my mom and I are going to a craft fair. And then you put your other one in the center. Once you do these a few, I haven't done these in two years, so. But once you've done a few of these, it's easy. You just want to kind of keep them lined up. Uh, cutting the squares up that really didn't even take that long I had my fabric doubled over basically and just went from there the longest part was iron them just because I'm OCD about that and if you happen to notice you got a bit of your ball showing through like that there you can kind of just press these together and you can take A dab of glue just a little bit you don't want a lot and I just spread it around right there and then I just push it down and that'll help hold it it'll keep it from spreading open you can glue all your pins before you stick them in there um, I haven't ever had an issue with them coming out of these balls so hi Dana um, I am making, yeah, transition. I am making a heirloom quilted ornament. No so. It's a quilted ornament. All right, so next we're going to work with our blue. And you're going to stick your pin in the center of that one. And with this, what you're going to do is you'll see where your point is. Can you zoom it down closer? Right there. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Thank you. The size of the ball is a three inch. Uh, we got them at Joanne's Fabric. And they don't technically three inches, but that's the size you want. Um, and it the Joanne Fabrics one, these ones are smooth styrofoam, and it's they're like 2.9 inches. It comes in a six pack. The fabric is three inch squares, three inch by three inch. You need a total of for one ball, you need four for your top, four for your bottom, eight for the next one, eight for the next one. Eight for the next one and eight for the next one. So depending on what colors you're going to go with is what you're going to do. Um, I'm doing two colors. So I have my white I just finished, then my blue, and then I'll have white again. And then I have two sets of the fabrics. This is what I'm using. And then you need uh, straight pins. I'll put everything needed down in the description box and the sizes and everything like that in case. Uh, the beginning of the video, I did uh, say what you needed. Um, if you got any loose threads, you, want, you, you can cut those off from your fabrics. For some reason, I got some going on. Okay. You're going to need some strips that are three inches wide, and then you iron them in half and fold it in half again to get 
that. Okay, now for your next color, you're going to start, there's eight of them. So you got eight point eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got eight of these lines. You're going to go down, um, I don't know how far that would be. Let me get my ruler. <coughs> um, I would say about a half of an inch. You're going to go down and you're going to put this one in there. And then you're going to fold this one down. You're going to want to keep your fold line the same as the other to keep it symmetrical. The squares are three inches by three inches. And as you can see, my needles from the other one is not seen. These cover it up. I don't know if I want to go down a little bit further maybe. Yeah. And they pull right out if you decide to change something. They pull right out. I want to go down just a tad bit more. My mama and grandma used to make these. And then you're going to move your corner over. Like that. And you're always going to work across from the one you just did. So you put your pin in the center of the, there. And I like to iron it because it helps me with the placing everything. So we're going to go about there. That should be good. You can go to bed if you want. I'm watch for a second. Okay. I'm kind of curious about all that. Ouch, that one hurt my finger. Yeah, that's you get indents. It's sore. <laughs> Doing too many of these, you'll get sore. I know how to do the pine cone one. I know how to do um, several of the others. There's like all sorts of different types of these. Easter egg one. Ouch, yeah, these are starting to hurt my finger. So it looks like this. If you feel like these are not spaced out the same, it, it's not a big deal. Um, I probably should have moved this one up just a tad bit, but I'm not going to mess with it. I think it looks okay. And then I'm going to work. You're welcome, sweetheart. I can message you too, Laura, afterwards and uh, send you a private message with all the dimensions and whatnot. So you're going to line that up. And you always want to make sure you keep your center seams, your fold seam, is going to be the same lineup as the center of this. You want to keep them all the same. Night, Patty. Love you, girl.
<clears throat> there we go. Some people make these with three different fabrics. Um, I kind of like the look of this with using just the one and the two, or the, the two, one in the center, one on the outside, and then the middle, and then whatever you use in your center color is going to be what you wrap around it. I just like that look. It's just a preference for me. There's no right or wrong. You could do multiple, you know, different colors. You could do rainbow one, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, like all the way down. So... You did it six colors if you wanted to do that. Heck, on something like this, if you just still wanted to do the two colors, but you wanted it plain, you could do plain at the very top at the center, plain, that plain white instead of one of the design on it. And then the yeah, I've done that. And then like the the pattern with the white. If I could find my other ones, I'd show, but I don't. I have some like that where I used a striped fabric. It was red and green stripes, like pinstripe and had gold stripe in there or something like that and I used oh, that hurt? I used um just red as my off color you just want something that'll be a nice contrast to it you don't right. want you don't want it to blend because then you won't see the pattern or the whole aspect of it so so there we are with that done so now what we're going to do is our next ones they're going to line up here Will you hand me that green magnet and that sewing bin right there, please? That green thing. This chair makes me feel really short. Oh, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> All right. This is my sewing magnet. It's... I could have used a bingo magnet. That would have been a lot cheaper, I think. So I'm going to find my center. And I like that side better. It's got more of the color on it. So I'm just going to flip this pin backwards and use that. And I'm just going to line that up here with these two. I'm going to try and do it to if you... When you're working on your next set there, if you line it up like this, you can kind of see if you're in the right area to help keep it symmetrical. And there we go. You don't have to fold both in at the same time. I, I think for me it's just habit from when I made these before. <coughs> But it takes 200 pins. Which is a lot, actually. If you think about it. It's a lot of pins. Yeah, but it seems like a lot, but watching you do this. Yeah. Like, okay, well, it makes a little bit more sense why it takes so many darn pins. Yeah, yeah. And there's that. It really, I mean, this part doesn't take that long. It's what takes the longest is the whole cutting of the fabric. And, I mean, I iron these just because I feel, for me, it makes it easier to know where my center is going to be. Besides, if you didn't iron these in half like I did, you would just take your piece and fold it in half. And then try to keep your edges lined up and fold it in half again and then you would have to sit there and pinch this corner piece and then when you open it up you hope you pinched it good enough to get your center see for me it's i i prefer ironing in them And I will have uh, two of these for sale in the auction, unless I pick up a couple more 
balls because I can't find my package. I have like 17 packages of these balls from when I did the craft fair. Um, but of course I can't find the box that they were all packed in. Of course, because you know I need them. But I'll have two spare ones possibly. So unless we pick up another package of them, but I do make them to sell. So I will have them also for sale aside the auction. So if anybody was interested. And the same with my the unicorn ornaments. I have tons of ornaments and other things like that that will be for sale. I do have a business page on Facebook, but it's been inactive for like the last year. So I gotta trying to get it back going, but ouch. Yeah, sometimes these pens pens pins just don't want to push down in there. I think with this styrofoam, it's a little harder to push them in, but I, to me, I think they stay better. Whereas the other styrofoam is more like that floral styrofoam. Not the green stuff, but the white one. Uh, like you can get those styrofoam reefs and stuff. It's just more um, coarse. Coarse or whatever. Yeah. It's got more air in it. Yeah, they're more air. These, I think they hold better. And I had better luck. I tried the other ones. And they're cheaper than these by a few bucks. But to me, this holds up better. And that's why I prefer these ones. So. Yeah, you get an air pocket with them. The pen won't even hold. Well, if you have to, um, you know, if you mess up and you have to take it out and put it back in, the constant pulling it out, putting it back in, you know, it's going to make it loose. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. That's what she said. <laughs> and, you know, hi, Shelly. You know, it's like one of those throwing the hot dog down the hallway kind of things. Hmm. <laughs> so is everybody enjoying the weather we're having? No. We woke up with a quarter, about a quarter of inch of ice the other morning and snow. Yeah, it took me 20 minutes to thaw out the car. Yeah. My, my Jeep actually still had ice on it today. It finally fell off all of it today, but. But then we had a nice little dusting of snow. So yep. There was snow covered there for a minute. Yeah. A lot of accidents. I hope people have been safe. So we got one more for that side. And as you see, I'm getting down to the center of the bulb. And I like that side better, so we're going to flip this that way. And if you look, this is like a star. Hmm. That's 57 of Mary's today. Oh, <laughs> nice. It's like 30-something 30 here. 33, 34. It has been like extremely cold here. I am so over this cold weather. Hmm. Like <laughs> Grab a glass of water and drink a glass of water as soon as you're done with it. It'll It'll be better. Squirrel's got to take his medicine. So, when we dated before, I had to go to the emergency room because I was extremely sick. And I was running really high fevers, couldn't get them down, so he took me to the emergency room. Well, I ended up having strep throat, I think it was, mm -hmm. and bronchitis. And this is all within like three weeks to four weeks of my I lung was say it was in the first month. within my lung having a hole in it from sneezing well oh. just to be safe because he wasn't feeling good either they gave him a flu test and back and then the test. yeah back then the influenza test was they shove a giant ass q-tip like no, that long it wasn't a q-tip it was a it was a litmus paper test and I, not even exaggerating, it was probably about... It was a Q-tip, I'm telling you. It was a Q-tip on the other end. It was a litmus paper test, because I remember saying something to the effect that it looked like the, the pool test strips that I used at work, only uh, it was there a mile was, long. It was a Q-tip on there. It was a Q-tip. But anyways, anyway, he about, like, went, went, like, about duped out on that person. Like, it was so funny. Oh, I was... I was, you know... Yeah, I, okay, so I do need to rearrange this I, one I here. It was and bad. He, he was not up, happy. So he had to do it again. Yeah, he was not a happy squirrel. There we go. So, if you look at this, you have your star pattern. Ugh. 
So then our next one is going to be the white. I was just going to do a tutorial and then just do a voiceover and explain it. But I was like, no, I want to go live. I miss going live. I miss everybody. So then the same process. And I'm going to start with this one first. And you roughly go about the same distance down. Come up. Yeah, that's why sometimes it's easier just to pin one and pull the other one down. You definitely don't want to go through a metal detector with this. <laughs> and they're actually they don't they're not that heavy once they're all pinned together either. They they seem like they would be heavy, but has Tom wore his shirt yet, Mary? I figured he would as if with as cold as it's been. And then you just continuously work, you want to work across from each, each one you put. Has everybody got travel plans for Thanksgiving? <gasps> oh, hiccups. Whoa. Oh, dang it. I'm not going to lie, that kind of startled me. Huh? So My hiccup? Yeah. <laughs> Squirrel. I'm paying attention watching you on the screen and just like it kind of. I'm just hoping I'm staying in, the, in view. You are. You're right in the that name. This know. chair is killing my chest because my, my girls are resting right at this thing because this chair sits too low. You can raise it up. It, no, it's not going up. Every time I go to raise it up, the top falls off. So, and I don't want to sit in a gaming chair because mine then. Yeah, yours isn't as comfortable, but I'm going to have to because my girls are just, I'm having issues sitting like that. Oh, whoa. Hello. It's stuck in the register vent. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It up. No, it's good. Because you're, you're sitting about the same height. Oh, I, that's why I thought it was up. I thought you put it up. Yeah, that's you better. You want it, so. Oh, I want it all the way up. Also, I'm, it's not all the way up. But. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I. It don't matter what the chair is. It has to be all the way up. Or I feel like I'm short. You are short. Oh, shorter. When I have the chairs all the way higher, it, it's better. Otherwise, I have to sit on my knees, and that's killing my knees because I still feel too short. Even eating dinner, I have to sit on my knees so I can reach the tables. <laughs> oh, she said, no, he hasn't been dressed for days because he, he's just been wearing feathers. Aw. Dana's not going anywhere. Uh, we're just going Mary's down to my mom's. Anywhere. Mary's not going anywhere. Yeah, Kiki's not going anywhere because she's cooking for her mom and family, so they're all coming to her. We're just going to go down to mom's. <laughs> Which is literally right around the corner. Right. It's not a corner. It's right yeah. across the street. Basically. I could spit on her porch, probably. Yeah. Well, not really that close. Maybe but if the wind's blowing hard enough. <laughs> yeah, if the wind's blowing hard enough. My dad says he could shoot my windows out. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. With well, too. he could, but they don't have their guns no more because they got blown up in the fire. I burned up in the fire. And as you get around, you'll notice that my my last layer here ends up where my seam is on my ball. And these are easy, pretty easy to make. I mean, it's not, it, they're not hard. Dana said they're Boston. Uh, yeah, Dana said they're Boston <gasps> last week. He was 11 years old. Oh, Dana, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry sweetheart. Man. You want to adopt Pixie? <laughs> <laughs> She's driving me nuts lately. She's going in heat. And I have to get her fixed. 
and it's expensive. Um, my mom's actually got a friend who works at a vet. She's going to call her and find out how much it is at their vet. Because my vet wants to charge too much money. So, they want to charge $229 because she's microchipped. And the Humane Society won't do it because she's microchipped and she's not a stray dog. So, yeah. So, I got to figure something out because she's got to get it done this year. The vet that I took Winston to, the cat that I had, mm -hmm. they were going to charge me $180 for that. It's ridiculous. I would love for her to be able to have puppies, but my luck is they're going to be too damn cute and I'm going to want to keep them all. So, yeah. <laughs> I After I had Pixie, like, I don't know, I think I've had, ouch. I think I had her for about a year and a half or so. Maybe a little longer. I had a nightmare that... She jumped out a car window. She was on her leash. And she jumped out the window. And I wasn't even going that fast. So I stopped to get her. And she takes off. Well then all of a sudden. I'm in like this weird location. And there's these animals everywhere. And I'm trying to look for my dog. And they're like oh she's right here. And I'm like that's not my dog. And it was like a puppy mill place. And I never was so scared of my life. I'm looking all over for my dog. And I'm like, she's microchipped. And I'm like, that's not my dog. And they're like, well, this is the chip that we found. I'm like, no, you guys are messing with me. And finally I found her. And oh my gosh, it was just, yeah. Yeah, that would be enough. It was bad. I don't have good dreams. I have bad dreams, usually. But whenever she's in the car, the windows are not down. She gets, well, they are like maybe an inch or two. She can stick her nose out of it. But even just sitting there, nope, the windows are not down all the way. Nope. Well, <laughs> because this scares the hell, it scared the hell out of me. But she's always on her leash. She doesn't <clears throat> run loose in the vehicle. Right. And she's always on her leash. But it scared the hell out of me. Oh, I bet it is, Dana. I bet it is. I wouldn't know what to do. She drives me nuts, but I probably would go be lost without her because she's helped me through a lot the past three years. I've actually had her this uh, this weekend is March three years that I got her. So it was our three year anniversary. Aww. Yeah. And she still drives me crazy. She was so little. Oh, she was so little. She was so cute. She doesn't look nothing like she did when she was a baby. Laura says, <clears throat> go to Petco. They're always announcing low spade clinics. Are they? Yeah, I'll have to check. I don't even know. I know we got a pet smart because we have more. I have my yeah, we got a pet know. smart, but. I don't know if we have a pet cooler on here. Yeah, I don't know. I just. You know, I'm just worried she's going to go to some butcher or something and they're not going to do it right. Because Yorkies have issues if they don't get done in a specific amount of time. If they've never had kids, they can have complications in the future if you don't get them fixed before a certain age. And she's three years old. And it needs to be done. So. <clears throat> oh, nice. Yeah, Pixie doesn't jump around in a vehicle. She actually does really good on car rides. She will sit on the in the passenger seat. She will just sit there if nobody's in there with me. Otherwise, if him and I are together and I, if I'm driving, she does not come in. She's not allowed in the driver's seat, and she knows that. Um, she stays in the passenger seat and if we stop, then she knows she can get over there. Um, if the passenger has to go inside or whatever type thing, but yeah, she's really, she does so excellent in cars. So she's we really to, good. When we went to Mary, she stayed on the armrest most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. When we went to Mary, she, um, I, I don't let her leash out all the way and it's, I tuck it down in between the seats uh, by the council area in between my seats and the Jeep. And she's got about maybe a foot of space. Like if she want, wanted to come into my lap, she could. Um, 
And she just, she laid on the armrest pretty much the entire way. That's how she was. She does really good on car rides. Ouch, that one hurts. Huh? Oh, whoops, sorry, guys. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I just noticed can you, can you move that thing down? I think it's the top one. It's, yeah, that. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. That's as far as it was. That's all right. That's better. <clears throat> Ouch. Yeah, that was my my one big worry is, you know, like, and, and not even, I mean, having dogs before and everything, yeah, but then, you know, just seeing, like, people in trucks and whatnot driving on the road and their dogs are yeah. oh. halfway out the door. Are you kidding me? Oh, I can't get my dogs halfway out the window and shit. Oh, I know. It's, you know, how do you ex not? Well, a lot of even dogs, I mean, bigger still, dogs, I mean, I still worry that some are going to just jump out. Yeah. That would freak me out. I yeah, I want to get her, actually, they got those seat belts for dogs. Not the one where she's flying through the air on the oh shit handle thing. But, yeah. So we have one half of the ball done. I think it's turning out really nice already. So we're going to flip it over. And we're going to start the other end. And I'm going to grab my four white. And basically, you want to find your center, which is going to be in that. Right there, you can kind of see the indent. It looks like a nipple. But there's a little spot in this very center of it. And I go just on the other side of that. Because I got want to make sure all four are going to go in there, right? And I'm going to try to line it up with this one here. I'm going to try an imaginary line there. And I'm going to line it, line it up. Since it's covered up anyway, can you draw like a line or something? Yeah, you there? can, but you risk a chance of your the marker or whatever bleeding onto your fabric. It's not hard to, like you could use a toothpick or something and make a line if you wanted. But just eyeballing it, it's not hard to eyeball it right there. I mean, it's not that much of a distance. So you could eyeball it easy, easily. And because we're back up at the top, you might have that opening in between, which you just take a little bit of glue and just stick it between it. Cause I don't even know which one of those I did it to. Cause you can't see it. I'm going to flip it around. When we move, um, cause I want to get 10 acres and I want to have some animals and stuff. I do want to get like a German shepherd or a husky or something, um, for protection. Pixie's good, but come on now. <laughs> she doesn't scare she'll nothing. Let, she'll let you know if somebody's there. Yeah. She'll let me like, she's good for as far as like noises and stuff, but I really would like something else. Ain't scare nobody off. But we got to be careful because he's allergic to animals, dogs, and cats. And it's the, dan the dander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. <clears throat> so you just want to kind of like make sure you line it up as best as you can. It's not going to be 100%, I'm sure. But it's handmade. Is anything 100% when it's handmade? You know, you can't expect it to be perfect if it's handmade because I've seen some store bought and stuff that did not was far from perfect, you know. Right. So. Ouch. That cut my finger right there. All right. For everybody that's still in here, I'm heading to bed. All right. Good night, squirrel. Wait, before you go, can I go tinkle? Yeah. I'm not touching that, no, well, no, you're, I'm not going to let you touch this. And don't y'all be telling him to do it. Hmm. <laughs> Who's Who usually does that? Uh, Susan, Brenda. There's a whole bunch. There, of there's a, yeah, there's a few of them. There's a whole bunch of instigators in the bunch. Yep, instigators. That's okay. I would do it too. Be like, come on, do it, do it. 
and I already know there's going to be a gap on that one. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue. I'm going to put <laughs> a little bit of glue. All right, here we go. That's what I get for using the cap. Instead of putting it where it's supposed to go. Seriously, I hate this glue because it always takes forever to come out. All right, so I'm just going to put a little glue right there and I'm going to press them together as the pin here. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just going to press that together. Oops, I got to put a little glue on that side there. There's quite a bit of a delay in the chat, well, the video on the, my screen. Yeah, it's like a, it's more than 30 seconds, I think. There we go. I'm just glad my fever broke. I'm glad your fever broke too, because... Men are babies when they're sick. Howdy. It's like having a grown kid. Like I try not to. I just when I get sick, it just you just go to bed, so I don't have to deal with it. So that was all right. Yeah, it just <laughs> no matter what. That's so why you're like I'm going to bed last. So I was like, oh, that's fine. Let me thought I got to worry about it. <laughs> well, hey. It's, uh, the women in here will agree with me. Men are pansies when they're sick. They are the biggest babies ever when they get sick. I'm telling you. I'm not. It just makes me pass out. It, but if you didn't my pass body, out. My body shuts down. Yeah, but that's just, yeah. But I, I bet you they will agree with me that men who get sick are babies. They are the worst. They just... Yeah, it's, ask mom, yeah. mom will tell you. Mom thinks everybody's her baby, though. Yeah, well, yeah. She said, tell you to suck it up, buttercup, no matter what it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, she does. That's what I'm saying. Yep. You like, suck it up, buttercup. Make sure I line it up with my center. Almost poked my finger. And because I put the glue down on there, I'm trying to make sure I got my points done. Oh, that hurts. My poor finger. Nobody said anything for a minute. Why everybody still awake? Everybody should be awake. Is this boring? Like, y'all bored? I hope not. Okay. Whoops. I'm going to let Squirrel hang out with you guys for a minute. <laughs> like he needs my permission or anything. No. But <laughs> um, I'm going to go tinkle. And I'll be back in a minute. And we will finish that up. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> you have to pardon me if you don't hear me very well. I'm still trying to recover my voice. Mm-hmm. Oh. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Yeah, no, when I get sick, I don't, <clears throat> if I, if it doesn't make me pass out, then yeah, I might be a little bit whiny, but I mean, for the most part, anytime I get sick, it's just, I just pass out. Like, last night, I got home from the clinic, uh, it was about 6.30, I think, by the time I got to Walgreens to get my prescription and got home it was about 6 30 I think and at that point my fever was so high I don't recollect any kind of time I Spanky says I went to bed at like 7 15 7 30 I thought I went to bed closer to like 8 30 8 45 but <clears throat> regardless I didn't wake up this morning until I think it was a quarter after 10. So regardless, I got like oh, 14 plus hours of sleep. So, yeah. Normally, I can't stay in bed longer than like 7 or 8, even if I'm trying to sleep in. So, yeah, it, it, when I went to bed, well, when they took my temperature at the clinic, it was 102.7. And it felt like it. It felt hotter than that, honestly. But luckily, my fever broke last night. Luckily, my fever broke, and I woke up this morning a little bit better, but I could still barely talk because of my sinus infection. So better now, but <clears throat> still not a hundred percent. Better I can go to work tomorrow, but. The doctor said don't go to work until Monday, but yeah, being commission-based, I can't afford to do that. Yeah, she said I went to bed at 7.30, I think, 7.15, 7.30, so if that's the case, then I slept for 15 hours. I'm about to, Laura. I'm about to. Feel better now? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> I'm being told to go to bed and get my rest. <laughs> yeah. Your mom went and seen. Uh, is that one mine? No, it's mine. Okay. Your mom went and, and Lori went. Okay. Your mom and sister went and seen the new Grim one. Remember the one I said I wanted to go see? Uh, the Tales of the yeah. Grimwald or whatever. Yep. Yeah, it's all Harry Potter related. So it doesn't yeah. Matter. Hopefully that medicine doesn't make you jittery to stay up. No, I think yesterday. I Whoa! Was, that was a little much. Yeah, that was a little much. I go to get no. all my pin, some pins out. Oh, yeah. And then. they all come out. <laughs> <laughs> all except for one. Yeah, no, last night I think I was jittery because I couldn't get comfortable because of a shot in the arm that they gave him. That's because he won't let them give him a steroid shot in his butt. Because I whenever what they did to you. Because gonna... whenever they gave me the shot in my butt, it always swells up and I still have a knot from when I got the shot after the accident. Yeah. And even the one before that. Oh I know, I yeah, yeah, I had like a third like, butt cheek. Yeah, that was like three months ago. Yeah. So, yeah, no, when they said, yeah, I'll give you a shot, I was like, okay, well, if I have a preference, <laughs> it's going in my arm, because I've seen what y'all did the last two times to Spanky. <laughs> so. You didn't tell me. Well, no, but you get the gist of it. Yeah. So, I was like, yeah, no, you can give it to me in my arm. I'll take <laughs> it in my arm. It's, it's no big deal. And they're like, well, it's a steroid shot. I was just like, well. I, I told them. I've had steroid shots in my arm before. It'll burn for a little bit, but then I'll get over it. No big deal. She's like, well, this one's not going to burn. I'm like, well, whatever, you know. I told him either because he was like, well, I'm, I don't want them to give me that flu test thing in the nose. I said, they probably don't even do that anymore. Well, then, oh, I broke my nail. I said, it's either that or I put my foot in your ass, so you got a choice. 
So, yeah, it was one or the other. Yeah, so I went. I went because I wanted to get better, but I went because... Okay, and that pin... Want, sometimes you'll get it to where the pin will bend. <clears throat> sometimes they'll go in, but I'm not going to fight with it, so we're just going to move on to the next pin. Oh, my God, that hurt. Because oh. I don't want to get blood on this. Oh, and we got a boo-boo. <laughs> I hate needles. I hate needles. I hate pins. I hate pins and needles. <laughs> oh, my God, that hurt. Smaller one? Uh huh? Smaller one? What do you mean, small one? Smaller. Yeah, that's fine. Oh my gosh. Holy macro. So you still have four balls to do, so I'm going to get you another one for later. Or something. I'm not doing all four tonight. Maybe two. Or I don't know, but. I'm just hoping that's the wrong one. I know, I always do. Oh, that's too little. What the hell kind of bandy does that? Is that. Is this one bigger than that one? Because that's little. That's, why I don't know. That's a dinky ass band aid. That's like, well, it you would fit, but. Oh my goodness, that hurt. Whew. Yep, getting a band aid. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to need two because it's right at the. Really? So, anyway, yeah, when she's like, just go to the doctor. You got insurance now. Just go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. I know. I was like, so, you got I'm insurance. Fine. Why not go? And he's like, and he was saying something. I was like, well, it's either you go or, you know, my foot's going in your ass because if I get sick, er. Yeah, I didn't want her to get sick because she's susceptible to it. So I, get I, everything. I went and then they're like, well, we'll give you a flu test. And I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> great. Here we go. He texts me, I'm getting that damn flu test. I wish you were here. I said, oh, you'll be okay. <laughs> the, one, the one thing I did not want to get when I went there was the damn flu test because of what they did last time. Well, it wasn't the same doctor as a different state all together, but yeah, I was totally, <clears throat> totally just did not want to go through that again. And it's like, oh, we're going to give you the flu test to make sure you don't have the flu. And I'm thinking, oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> I'm like, it's not that long ass, you know, thing. And test thing again. It, oh, no, we stopped doing that like years ago. Like, well, what do you do then? Like, well, we just take a Q-tip and swab the inside of your nose. I'm like, how far up do you got to go? Just just on the inside of the nostril. I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> and it tickled my nose here more than it did anything else. <laughs> I texted mom. I was like, oh, guess he's getting the flu thing done. And it was funny because when they took it and they did it in their little... Dish, Petri dish? Yeah, whatever they do Yeah. in that little thing. She did something messed up and like didn't set the timer right or didn't start it right or something. And I was like, hey, if you need to do another one, go right ahead because I didn't hurt at all. So I'm not bothered by it. <laughs> you manned up. Mom said you better grow a set of balls. It was funny. Kiki, I was never able to do the, the <laughs> flu shot for the longest time because the flu shots are egg based. I don't do a flu shot at all. I've never, I've had one and I got sicker than hell and I refuse to and do them anymore. And that's the other reason why I haven't because I heard about that. But yep. for the longest time I couldn't because they are egg based and for the longest t part of my life up until about five or six years ago. Laura told me be careful not pin my band-aid yeah, to the, pin your band yeah, yeah. Um, I was allergic to eggs all my life up until about four or five years ago. So I've done it many times that. before, Laura. <clears throat> I've pinned my band-aids in my fabric or I've sewn my band-aid and yeah. You know, I always wondered what the 4C4L was after Kiki's name. Mm -hmm. Ask her. Kiki, what's the 4C4L stand for after your name?
Ah. Oh. Hang on, I gotta ooh, go grab something really quick. I want to show a few of the things I like to make really quick. Not those, those are a secret. So here's really quick. I'll, I'll finish this ornament really quick and then I'll show you. Let's move these out of the way though. I'm going to show you a couple things I'm going to throw in the auction that I made. I love making them. They're so much fun too. But we're going to finish this first. We're almost there. You can actually get the cone shaped um, styrofoam cones. And you can do the same thing pretty much. And you can make a Christmas tree. Those are really pretty. Almost just pinned my band aid. I should washi tape around that right there so it's not hanging out. <laughs> Ouch. No, I was going to take you to my mess here on which washi tape you want to use to do it with. No, it's not. I'll just grab one. Okay. I have one over here. I thought. Oh, no, it's up there on the. It's over on the table. It's up there. There's a pink one up there. In front of the TV. To the right, on top. In front of the TV. <clears throat> or the mustache one. Mm. Use the mustache one because I don't like... Um, I don't use that one that often. Kiki walked away or she didn't hear me all the past her there. Hey Kiki! Are you still here? <clears throat> I can't talk very well. Squirrel so. wants to know what your 4C4L stands for. I'm not that far away from the mic, so I think she heard it. I thought she stepped away. But I'm going to lay down. Alrighty. I, I guess you'll have to wait till tomorrow to hear. Yep. Well, the doctor took you off, but. Yeah, but I can't afford it. Oh, I know. Don't forget your doctor's note. Yeah, I put it on my keyboard. Okay. Oh, hey, look. My phone just told me to thank you live. <laughs> uh, set your alarm. Yeah, it's fine. I forgot to turn it off. Last Kiki, Squirrel wants to know what that 4C4L stands for. In your name. That looks like a Christmas star, kind of. It's mm -hmm. pretty. Oh, yeah, it does. Chronic pain crafting community for life. There you go. That's what it be standing for. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Good night. Nice squirrel. Go to bed. Take Pixie with you so she doesn't bug me. <laughs> I can try and take her with me. But oh, you know damn well she'd be right back out here. Oh, well, I don't know if she's down there. I don't know if she might already be in there. She might have moved in there. Yeah, she'll come right back out here. Yeah. I think she fell asleep with me yesterday for a minute, but I don't remember much of last night. Yeah. All right, we're gonna washi tape my band aid really quick. <laughs> All right, good night. Good night. Squirrel says good night, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna have to glue that down. That don't stay down very well. That was a cheap washi tape I got. I heard that. Mm. 
Laura says good night, Squirrel. Laura. And we're almost, we have one more layer and we're almost done to the final step. I can usually get one of these done in about a half hour if I have everything cut, pre-cut and ready. Um, I just sit and knock them out. Put a movie on and go to town on it. There we go. Push those in. And there's our other blue row. Now we're on our last row of white. I'm actually shocked, knock on wood, I've only stabbed myself once so far. Usually it's more than that. Oh. You notice I'm almost, ex ouch, dang it, I did it again. Almost in line with where that other one is there. Oh, that one didn't bleed. I need like pokey proof gloves. Oops, I just dropped a pin. Alright, I gotta clean out the magnet really quick so I can run it around on the floor because I dropped a needle or a pin and I don't want Pixie to get it. So give me a second, you guys. Aha, found it. There we go. That's why I have a magnet is because of Pixie. In case I drop some, I can pick them up right away so I don't, uh, so she doesn't get a hold of them. She got a hold of one, one of my sewing stripe pins when I was making a quilt one day. Ooh, I was not happy. <laughs> I was so mad when she got a hold of it because it was on, I had a board. A foam board that was like nine foot by eight foot tall and it's where I put my quilting patterns and such on when I was quilting laying out my patterns and such and I had them pinned to the board my pattern and she decided to get one of my pins off I was not happy And hello to anybody that's tuned in that I haven't seen in here yet. If you're curious on what I'm making, I'm making a no sew heirloom quilted ornament. It 
These are actually really nice to pass down to generations. Well, it's already after 11, about 11 o'clock already. It doesn't seem like it's that late already. Do you, Laura? One of these. Um, there's several designs. Like I've seen, oh, I've seen some really pretty ones. Come on, straight pin. I hate when they bend, but I'll use my pliers later and I'll straighten it out. Um, there's several other designs I want to learn. I think they're gorgeous. And. They take a lot of work, but how to come up? Yeah. Go in there. Oh, thank you. Once you get so far, you're like poking into the other needles. <laughs> Your fingers will hurt. Having a thibbo is nice. And when you do these enough, you'll ouch, you'll know where to place stuff. Okay, that washi tape is just not cutting it for me there. Yes, squirrel, you can do that. Go to bed and get off your phone. Good night. Bad squirrel. <laughs> it's really weird knowing that two hundred pins are in this. That's how many it takes. It's four per square. And yeah, it's insane. Hi, Anita. <laughs> you tell him. He's being a naughty squirrel. Hurry back, Laura. How are them kitties doing, Anita? Did you get them all warmed and stuff in the tubs? And totes and stuff? Poor little things. I'm sorry if I keep going on to mute, you guys. I don't mean to. Trying to get that one tighter. There we go. Oh, that'll work. I can put a band aid on my finger. Oh, that's even better. 
Ah, Anita was lurking. Did I miss one somewhere? Yep, right there. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. She has, um, she had some kittens outside that they couldn't bring inside, and so she was trying to get them warm by making them little homes in, um, some storage container, uh, like storage totes or something. Ow. There's so many strays around here. All right, and we're done with that. I'm gonna trim that thread off string there. Okay, now I'm gonna set that here. I'm gonna move my needles so I don't spill it because I'm accident prone like that. And I'm going to get maybe one of these these are floral pins and I like to use these because they got the pearl on the top which I like to use so I gotta get one of those out I will get this out because I will need that and my two ribbons here okay and I need to plug in my heat, not my heat gun, but my glue gun here. And I have a silicone mat for my glue gun. So I'll set that here. Don't burn nothing. And I need a glue stick for in there. Now at this point, what I usually do is I save this step for last. But, and then I go on to my next one, <coughs> but I will start it now. <laughs> Anita's giving it away. <laughs> so while I'm letting my, my glue gun warm up, I will show you guys something that I'm going to be adding into the auction. So these are, let me zoom out. These are zipper pouches that I make. This is a square zipper pouch. It expands. And it zips. I have several. This one's sugar skulls, and they're quilted. Some of them. I have two of these that have paint brushes in them, and I have no idea where they're at. But I love these. These are my favorite ones to make. These are like those little Russian dolls. Yeah, I've got to get um, my pumpkins are going in the mail Tuesday. And then I have these are some other types of zipper pouches that I've made. This one. I have a Star Wars one, a couple Star Wars one. This one's got a gray inside. I think this one's gray too. Nope, this one's red. These make really good Christmas gifts. I had like tons of these and I sold quite a few of them. So 
That's what it is. They're all double sided. They're not reversible, but they're all lined with fabric on the inside. I love sewing. A watermelon one. My daughter's going to want this one, but she's not getting it. Which has a rainbow inside. And this is a different styled one. It's triangle. Polka dots on the inside. This one was a little different to make, but I liked how it turned out. And then strawberries, which has a red inside. I love, like, I used to hate putting zippers in, but I actually love doing zippers now. And they're all hidden zipper ends. Uh, all except for that one. Yeah, that one don't have one, I don't think. And then, of course, the ladybug, which has the black and white polka dot. Or black and white, black and red polka dot. Yeah, these ones are my favorite ones to make. But I will be putting these in the auction because they're just taking up space now. And it expands. And I do make makeup bags also like this, but bigger. They're makeup bags. And then I have a couple purses that I've made. It's got a button here. And two pockets on the inside. It's a square bottom purse, so it does go flat. So there's one. Uh, this is a coin purse or a little travel bag purse with a lobster clasp. And it's got, it's quilted on the inside and lined. It's a square bottom. And this is one of my favorites that I made. It's got an outside pocket, pocket zipper pocket. A sugar skull button for the button here for clasp to close it. That's the closure. Just like that. There's the back. Hi Zoe. And then here's the inside. And it has a pocket on the inside also. And the pocket is lined. Something else I really love to do is so. And this is a reversible bag. Zoom up a little bit more. There we go. It's got a button on either side. And here's one side, which is deer head, like a buck skull. And then it's reversible. You turn it inside out if you get tired of one way. You can wear it the other direction. And it has my logo on there, Spanky's Creations. And there's the inside. I love making these too. These are fun to make. And then here is the other one, which is the orange and white deer heads with this the chevron pattern or arrow, whatever you want to call it. 
orange button. And this too is reversible. These will be in the auction too because I just, I don't, I need to stop and get rid of them. They're just taking up space. So I will have these in the auction too. I made these three years ago, two years ago, two years ago I made these. And it's got the arrows on the outside for the pattern. And then it closes like this. Like that. Yeah, I love sewing. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Yeah, I love sewing. This one actually comes with a little zipper pouch, a coin purse, with a keep uh, so you can hold it with your keychain there. Looks like a little duffel bag, and it matches. It's got the arrow on the inside. Yes, it gave birth. <laughs> So yeah, this one goes with that. Put that in there. Ugh. So yeah, those are the some special things I'm adding in. I also have a rag quilt that I made that's in the other room too. It's a baby blanket. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm going to fold my end under. Oh, let me zoom back in a little bit so you guys can see better. <laughs> Hi, Christine G. Thank you, Mary. Yes, Mary, when, I, when we get down that way, yes, we are going to sew. So because this is the underside, I am going to pin in the center of this. Well, not exactly in the center. I'm going to go just in from the edge really fast there and one there and then I'm going to lift them up because I want this centered around this so I lift this up so I got it pinned and I'm going to run a bead of glue around that I don't like this glue stick because it bleeds out. And then I'm just going to push it down, keeping them ends tucked under. And now I'm going to push those pins straight down in. There we go. The glue is to help keep that under there. Yeah, I learned how, to, my grandma taught me how to sew. Um, and I just learned it, like, I just do it. Like, I can look at almost anything and make it. Uh, my grandma taught me how to do that. Just It's like certain people who play certain instruments, they can just listen to a song and pick up a guitar and start playing it. So what you're going to do is you're going to stretch that around your ball. And you're going to see where it ends. This band-aid's driving me nuts. And I want to make sure I cover that. This is going to be my center of where my ball, my ribbon goes. So I'm just going to fold this under. I could have cut it a little closer, but I probably will trim it so it's not showing. Yeah, I'm going to have to trim that a little bit. So, let's see here. I think for this, I think at 10 inches is a good length. Um, yeah, about 10 inches really It was what I should have done, but so we're just going to trim a little bit of this off here. If it holds still. I have to put it up against my chest really quick so I can hold it. So sorry if I'm out of view, you guys. Give me a second. <laughs> there we go. All right. I do not like this glue, glue gun. 
So I'm just going to put a little dab of glue there just so I can fold that under so it's easier to pull this up and it's going to go on top of that. You want it as close, uh, just overlapping, but not um, overlapping all the way. You do want to overlap that other one just a little bit, but not by much because you want to be able to put your pins in there. And I just pull it tight. And so this doesn't move. Whoops, just pull my pins out. So this doesn't move. I will add a, before I pin it down on the bottom, I'll add a little bit of hot glue around the bottom here. Just to hold that in place. Ooh, that was hot. <laughs> Keep it up against that so it doesn't move around or nothing. All right, that makes it easier to fold it under too. I made my daughter's flower girl dress when I was married. When I well, when I got married, I made my daughter's flower girl dress. Back when I went to school, we had home ec and all that kind of stuff, you know, so we got to learn how to sew and stuff in school, too. Now, these pins I am not going to keep in there. I just put the one in the side just to hold it so I can get this pin down or glued down. I'm going to kind of fold this corner under a little bit so it doesn't stick out if that moves. Oh, there we go. I see it's kind of peeking up right there. There's like a little opening right there. I'm just going to add a little drop of glue in here. To hold that down. There we go. And the same on the other side. Oops. Oh, it's stringy. It's it's going everywhere. <laughs> Hot glue boogies. Ugh. Yeah, we used to make our baby doll clothes and stuff and when we were little. Yeah, well. Yeah, I don't really like making clothes, but I'd rather alter a clothing rather than start from scratch. But All right, so we have that. So next up is going to be our thin ribbon, which we will <coughs> use a hot glue. And you want to kind of just center it as best as you can. There we go. And I'm going to just add a drop here and there to help hold that in place so it doesn't move. And I'm going to bring it back up around to the top and I'm going to trim it right just at the edge there. I'll put another dab of glue there and press that down. And where this meets, this right here is where our bow is going to go. 
Now, you don't have to make a bow if you don't want to. Um, oh, that was country sounding. Want to, if you don't want to. <laughs> um, I don't know where my needle went. There it is. But I like to add the bows. <coughs> and I'm done with my hot glue gun, so I will be unplugging that because it likes to leak. Oh, I'll keep that because I can paint that and use that. But yeah, it likes to drip. So that makes me mad. <coughs> Alright, so now I'm going to take this other ribbon I have. I can move this one out of the way. And you can use any size of ribbon or color that you'd like. I'm just using this. Uh, there we go. And I make my bows really weird. Um, so I'm going to take this pin. I'm going to figure out how big of a bow loops I want. And I want to go about like that size. So I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to stick it through there. And then what I'm going to do is kind of figure out how big I need my loop. And then I'm just going to poke it through and then you just go back and forth try to keep your loops the same size so it doesn't look all wonky if you get some that aren't the same it's okay you can just pull it out and do another loop. Whoops, that one's too big. There we go. And you can do it as um, thick as you want or however. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is trim that right there. Not directly at the edge of the needle, but where it's hidden. Okay. So I'm going to take this piece here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a pretty long tail on there. So you don't have to have a long tail. I mean, that's up to you. So I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to fold these ends in so I can make my ends all like that. And I'm going to put it on like that. So now, the next thing. <coughs> I need a string to hang from the top. So we're going to pull a piece of this one off. For the hanger. About like that. And this is going to go in the bottom. Like that. Oh, I do need my hot glue gun again. I forgot. Whoops. Because we're going to put hot glue on this needle when we shove it down in there. So it doesn't go anywhere. And it doesn't come back out. There we go. And because this is going to be our loop to hang it from, I'm going to go around the back side. See, here's my, this is, it's going to sit like this. So I'm going underneath it upside down like this. And I'm going to bring it right back around. And push that through like that. So it's going to look like this. And see if my 
There we go. My hot glue is ready. And I am going to shove some Aileen's Tacky Glue on this end. I'm just going to run it in my bottle to get some glue on there. So that way it also glues to the inside. Oops. And I'm going to find where my seam is. And that is where we're going. Whoops. Probably. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Okay, there we go. That's where we're going to push our needle in, if it goes in, and I'm going to run a dab of hot glue under there as I push it down. <coughs> Excuse me. And here is our hanger here. Push that around. Kind of maneuver that in around these pieces here so it doesn't look so wonky. And there's our ornament. And now what I like to do is I take some blue glitter glue. And I will squeeze a dot of it in the center of this. Whoops, like that. Not quite like that much, but just like that. <laughs> and I'll press it down in there. And I'll usually, I'll probably go over that twice. So I have a good dark um, center right there. You can put a sequin there if you'd like. Um, that's your choice. I'll just do this and then when it dries I'll add another dot of the glue and then it'll be darker it'll get dark like the other one hi Wendy welcome to the corner thanks for joining Oh, thank you, Judy. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, the, and that helps just, you know, keep it pretty looking. And you can also add a pin at the bottom if you want. But, um, so yeah, that's how I do that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far and learned something. They're simple to make. Um, I like making them granted it took me three hours two hours uh two hours but you know that was you know explaining things so just sitting here doing it it really doesn't take that long yeah there's several ways to do the bows but i think for this doing it like that it works because then you can pin it down underneath and you can move these around and you know kind of give your bow a different look however you want you know space them out to where you got them even and or whatever and then you don't have a knot for tying this so it's all hidden everything's hidden under there so yeah uh Thank you. I hope you guys learned it and then it was an easy process for you to understand. I hope I explained everything good to where you understood it. So again, I'll go over everything. <coughs> so you're going to need some dress pins. Um, a floral pin, which is optional. Um, that is just what I use again to put the, the bow on. Okay. You're going to, this is optional is the ribbon around here. That's optional. You don't have to add ribbon. And if you didn't want to add fabric right here, you could actually use wide ribbon to go around it. But for me, because I just do the two colors, I like using the contrast fabric from here there it just ties it together in my opinion 
but that's just my preference. So you need two different sizes of ribbons if you're going to do it like this. A hot glue gun and hot glue. Um, Aileen's tacky glue or even Elmer's glue or something for when those middle pieces split a little bit and they don't seem to be touching. You can add the glue to help push them together. So here's my, uh, my two ribbons. <coughs> Next thing you're going to need is a strip of fabric. It is three inches. This is optional. You can use ribbon if you'd like, but this is for that band across the center. Three inches. Excuse you, Pixie snoring. But um, it's three inches, and you're going to fold it in half and iron it down the center. And then you're going to open it up and fold in the ends like that and iron down there. So you have... A flat surface here and this center seam right there is going to give you a guide on where to put down your center ribbon there okay <coughs> hi miss mary marla so the next thing you're going to need is fabric um three different you can use three different colors i chose two colors so you're going to have one two, three, four. So this is going to be my center is four pieces. So you're going to need eight total for your center color. Okay. Then the next one is blue. And for this one on the top, you're going to need eight. So since there's two sides, you're going to need a total of 16 blue. Okay. For your outside white, you're going to need eight. So you're going to need a total of 16 more white. So on top of the eight white for your center ones, you're going to need an additional 16 for your outer one because they match on both sides. Okay. I've got glue right there. These squares are three inches by three inches. That's how big you cut your squares. <clears throat> for me, I cut all my squares first. I iron them so they're all flat, no wrinkles. And then I fold them in half. And then I iron it. And then I fold it in half again and iron it. Which gives me these squares here. Which I put in these to keep each one. Because I have four of these I got to make. So um, I didn't do these ones because I wanted to show you how to start. So these are all folded and ready to go. <coughs> okay. And I just do that. It's my preference. You don't have to. This is just my choice. So it's, it's just easier for me to work with them like that. Okay. And then you're going to need styrofoam balls. These are... Th Three inch balls is what it calls for. Uh, the whoops, the package actually says like 2.9, and these are smooth. <coughs> whoops. Whoa, come here. So they come in a pack of six, and I got them at Joanne Fabrics. Thank you, Mary. And they come in a pack of six, and they're called Smooth Foam, Ball, whatever, you know. And it says 2.9 inches. This is the roughly the size. They have those other weird styrofoam ones. They're not the smooth one. It's like that gritty type, coarse type ones. Um, I don't like using those because it just, to me, I don't get a... It, to me, I just, I don't prefer those. That's just my opinion. I don't like them, but that's just me. <clears throat> They're cheaper than these, and you can sometimes find the three-inch balls at Dollar Tree or Walmart. I wasn't able to um, find these there. I got these at Joann's. I just prefer these um, because they have... Oops, got a hair on there. They have the center piece right there, that bobble, that hole. That's I can use that, and then I flip it over, and there's one on the end. 
like that look they have these little weird bumps on it but this one here is the center so I like because this I use as my guide for my middle so you can start anywhere you want on the ball that's up to you <clears throat> this is just how I do um now for fabric ouch that hurt okay I ended up buying probably more fabric than I needed because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I went so brain dead trying to figure it out. So give me a second and I will show you what I did. <coughs> All right. So this is fabric I had from before. Um, let me unplug that. So what I did is... Um, this is how it was. Let's see if I can zoom out enough. Let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> Let me move my hot glue out of the way here. Okay. This is basically the width of it on the bolt. So, um, here's the salvage end, you know, and here's the folded end. That's on the bolt. So when it's on a bolt, it, it's rolled up like this way. So this is the width of the bolt. Okay. Um, how I did it was, okay, I folded it in half like this and like this. And then I just cut my three inches. I had to have, I don't know exactly for one bulb because I had to cut multiples. I had to have 96 white of these. So I have 96 white ones. So what I did was I 96 and I uh, what I first did was I took my ruler and I cut across the three inches and then I opened up my strip. Let me grab a strip here. Okay. <clears throat> so what I did was I opened up my strip. I cut off my salvage end. Okay. And I just went through and every three inches I cut. And I counted how many I got out of one section. So I was able to get 14 pieces out of one strip. So I needed 96 total. Um, so out of just one strip, you don't need that much fabric. Um, so let's see, for one ball, whoops. I just pushed a button. Um, let's see. I had I had four white on one side and four white on the other. So I needed 24 white and 16 bl uh, blue. <coughs> so two strips gave me. Um, okay, so two strips. So um, six. Give yourself leeway for error in case you cut crooked. Um, so a half a yard would be perfect. Like you could do one with a half a yard or less of fabric. Um, because like I said, this is this is your folded end. So when it's on the bolt and they unravel it, this is the folded end. So when they unroll it, it's like it it looks like this on the bolt. <coughs> so a half a yard, even like 12 inches would be enough just a foot of each fabric um because just for one strip i get 14 so two strips is going to give me enough to do one out of one color and i need 24 squares for the other color so it just depends on how many colors are you doing or how many type you know the fabric choices if you're doing it like this you're going to need more of the center color or whichever then you do the other one so if I was to <coughs> excuse me so if I need 24 white I can get uh, 14 out of one strip cutting the salvage off um, then that leaves me that's 28 out of two strips so if I if I mathed right, so roughly around, yeah, you. Uh, I think about a half a yard, you would be okay. 
And each fabric is going to be different. Not every fabric is going to be the same width between salvage end and the folded end. They're not the same. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough of this fabric to um, do this. So, because this is from the year, the other year, last year when I did them. I didn't know if I was going to have enough fabric to do it. So I ended up getting this fabric, which is, it's got a metallic uh, glitter sheen to it. And there's snowflakes. Um, I could not math today, so I didn't know what to get. And I didn't want to be too short. But I ended up getting two yards of this because it was on sale anyways. But this is gorgeous fabric. It's really pretty. And it's got glittered, like... You can, there you go. You can kind of see the glittery, glitteriness in it. Um, but I got two yards of this, and that was definitely way too much. Um, I'll probably take it back because I don't need it. Um, and I didn't use none of it. And then I did get two yards of this. Um, and I definitely have plenty of this left over. So I definitely didn't need that much. Um, and this is like this is folded in half so this is your salvage end which is what's on the end of the bolt so I mean depending on how what fabric you choose the bolts are different sizes so from the each edge so I mean this is I don't remember I think it was like uh, 42 inches is what this one was 12. So this one's only like roughly around 40 inches from uh, 40 inches by, you know, 36 or whatever they cut it at. So definitely have plenty. I think if you were to get um, even a half a yard, if you were just going to make one. Yeah, oh, definitely, there definitely is a lot of, um, fabric left. Um, definitely. <laughs> I've got tons, you guys should see my Christmas fabric. I dug it out the other day, because I was looking for this. And I didn't have enough of this to be able to make, a, um, the ornament, so I had to go buy this fabric. And I was glad they actually had it in stock, so they have red like that, too. But, give me a second, I'll go grab my Christmas fabric, and you can see what I have. Okay, this is all my Christmas fabric. <laughs> so I have this, which is just the stripes, which matches this. It's beautiful. And then it also has this, goes with it. So this was a 3-4 a deal. So they all match. Oh, and this one also matches these. So, yeah, there's them. And then I have this glittery snowflake one. There's two of those. And then I have these pine cones. I actually made ornaments with these ones too, but I cannot find where those are. And then these are all glittery. 
uh, Santa Claus with houses. And it's all glittery. These are all glittery ones. And that one again. And this one is like little Christmas trees in there. It's glittery. There's a few of those. Then I got this one. Some of these I'm going to make stockings for, I think, for next year. I really like this one, too. This one's super cute. I need to get my autofocus to work. I don't know if that'll work or not. Let's see. Autofocus? Maybe. There we go. Let's see if they... Oh, there we go. Autofocus works. There we go. Oh, I'm not a hoarder. No, just a paper. Well, I, I hoard my paper. Well, I, I guess I hoard my fabric, too. I've got like 13 or 14 30 gallon totes in the craft room full of fabric. That's just what's in the craft room. That's not what's in the closet of the other room. And yeah, uh, some red and white snowflake. This one's really pretty. It's a uh, metallic gold. This one's super pretty. It's one of my favorite ones. This one. Yeah, the, yeah, those are going to be really pretty ornaments. And then this is one I used for ornaments last year. It's metallic. I wish I could find all those ornaments. I don't know where they went. And then I have a polka dotted one. Red with gold polka dots. It's okay, Christine. I think I, we all know we, we hoard something. Red and white striped. Uh, ugly sweater. You know, that ugly sweater fabric. <laughs> it sucked because I only needed... I wanted, I think it was the pine cone one. And in order to get the pine cone fabric, I had to buy the entire package of these fabrics. So I had to buy like, it was like a four set or something. So I ended up having to buy extras just to get what I wanted. So I got multiples of some of them. And then this one is just a plain one with snowflakes. It doesn't sparkle or nothing. And then there's this one, which it's hard to see the pattern on there, but they're like, Hollies, little white hollies on it. I don't know if you can see it right. Yeah, kind of. So I got that one. And this is one for a Christmas one. I am um, what I did with this one on the ornament is I used these two together for the ornament. And then I did one with the gold also. And the snowman. Oh, nice, Laura. This is a really pretty one, too. And it's it's not gold. It's more of a tan. It's like cream colored, but a tan colored design. These are all a couple years old. And then there's that one. This one's super pretty. It's metallic. I can't really see it on there. The gold swirls around the um, ivies or the hollies is metallic. And that one again. I got a couple of different yards of this one. I really, I just like this one. It's so metallic y. And then this was one I used in the ornaments. It's silver gray and it's got the metallic swirls in there. And there's that holly one again. And this is the green that matches that red one, kind of. It's metallic. <laughs> and then this one's super cute. It's metallic also. And 
super pretty. And then that chevron. And then this one, I think has snow. Yeah, this one has snowflake. It's so hard to see them. But they're there. It's hard to see. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah, it, it's hard to see them, but you can, you can kind of see them. It's really faint. And then I have this was one another. This is just like this fabric that I used for tonight's ornament, except for it's red. It's just like it. And that's what's left from, these are just scraps from when I did the other ornaments and stuff. So. But yep, just scraps in this bag. I have tons of scraps too. Like tons of scrap fabric. So yeah. That's just like this part of my, I think I have more Christmas fabric somewhere. I'm just not sure exactly where. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Kiki. Yeah. I love, um, love them. Yes, uh, uh, Laura, that's a good excuse as to why. I, I will agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I've been, my grandma, like, she used to have a lot of stuff. A lot of it had burned up in fires and stuff, but my grandma would save clothes. And, um, I made blankets out of all my kids' baby clothes. I made them all blankets, uh, like queen size blankets. Um, I hand sewed them. Never again will I, oh man, it was such a pain in the ass. I don't like to hand sew, <laughs> but, um, I do, but I just, if I would rather use my sewing machine if I can. I love my sewing machine. But... I have a serger, which I don't even know how to use. So it sits in its box, brand new. I know how to use, like I've used them in a factory when I used to work in a factory here in uh, town before I moved to Pennsylvania four years ago, five years ago. But um, I, as far as that, I've used that, but like my own or something, I have no idea how to spring it or set it up. So it'll wait until I um, go see Mary. Oh, I tell you what, I have more paper than I do fabric, but I told Squirrel I was going to get rid of all my paper so I could just get into the process of all the clay because I'm like really enjoying the whole clay thing, making clay or not making clay, but making stuff out of clay. So I was like, I'll, I'll get rid of all my paper. It was so funny. He was laughing. This is one of my favorites. I just, I love the color. It's really bright. Like the camera doesn't do it justice. It's super bright. Yeah, I do. I don't know how to use it, though. So, it's it's brand new in the box. <laughs> it just sits there because I have no idea how to use it. I got it um, three years ago. Yeah, I think three years ago I got it. Um, Black Friday sale, actually. Um, it was on sale, and then I had a coupon. So. Oh, that's awesome, Laura. Sergers are actually nice. You can do so much with a serger. Like... But I don't know how to use mine, which really sucks because it's just sitting there. I might auction, I might have to put this bundle in the auction because I probably will never use this. It'd be pretty for a journal. But I just, I have too much going on and too much other stuff doing. So I might put that one in the auction. It's pretty, I love the bird, the bird fabric is gorgeous. But so yeah, that's my Christmas fabric, and I got it to do ornaments. And I I did like I've made over a hundred of these ornaments 
and I sold a lot of them. But <laughs> oh yeah, my Barbies never had. Well, I would make clothes and stuff for them, but yeah, we hardly ever. We didn't have the real Barbies. We had the generic Barbies. <laughs> Okay, I gotta move these. Marlena! Hugs! I can't wait to come back down there and see all you guys. We're definitely gonna... I'll have to let you know ahead of time so you can arrange to come and visit when we come down. But next time we come down... For the visit, it's going to be like a week. <laughs> the weekend was just not long enough. There was not enough time. But Squirrel and I did find property down there. Um, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be there in two years when we're ready to move. <laughs> that would be awesome if it is. We're hoping. But I also found, like, I did find something that really called to me. Uh, we found a place that's like half the price of the other one. But um, it's further away. It's in northern Arkansas. But it's it's like, it just, it was like, it, it says home. <laughs> but yeah. Are you still in Cali are you in California now or are you still back home? Marlena. Oh, you're back you're in California again. You poor thing. I have a uh, we actually I found out from my mom we have family in California and nobody's been in contact with them since the fire, so we're not sure. Yeah, I've actually done a bulb with um, sequins before, and that, that was a pain in the ass, and I don't think I'll ever do that. That was that was a pain, the sequin. But So this is what I made tonight, Marlena. It was a Chris quilted uh, heirloom no-sew quilted Christmas ornament bulb. Yeah, it's it's sad. I it's been so sad. Uh I just couldn't even imagine. Like I know how it was when my mom and dad's house burned down. It was bad. I can even just like imagine what's going on over there. That's just I it's crazy. It really is crazy. A friend of mine had said that it looked like a war zone. Like, it, it looked, it's just crazy. I just, I couldn't even, like, imagine it. Watching one house burn down, let alone, like, an entire town and stuff. I just, it would be crazy. Well, hey, at least it's a video and you can watch the replay. <laughs> That's the bonus. <laughs> Yeah, if they tell you to evacuate, girl, you better. It's crazy. And they don't know how it started yet. I don't know. Last I read, I don't think they know how it started. But I have to use the little girl's room, you guys. So I will be right back. So give me a second or two. I'll be right back.
Hey, baby girl, what's the matter? You scared that hop out of me when you barked. Come here. Come here. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're okay. Come here. <coughs> you want to tell everybody hi? Hmm? Come here. Hold still. You're okay. Nope. Let's move you down a little bit. There we go. Here we go. Tell everybody hi. You probably just scared the hell out of everybody by barking. <laughs> I think she's got to go P-O-T-T-Y. <laughs> uh, what kind is what, Anita? Was it a campfire that started it? Well, oh wow, it's crazy. Okay, Pixie needs outside. I'll be right back. I don't want her barking up a storm. Hang on, Lulu. Mama's gonna put her shoes on. I don't know why you're barking. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there, baby. Come here. It's okay. All right, hurry up. Let's go potty. All right, let's go. Good girl. Good girl. All right. Good girl. <coughs> All right, that was quick. <laughs> Oh, that sounds good, Mary. Yeah, the auction is going to be on the 24th. Um, I don't know why it says 23rd. Um, I got a fixed night, Bob. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the 24th now. <coughs> um, because of my accident, I had to reschedule. Uh, let me edit. Let's fix the night bot. <laughs> there we go. And it should be fixed now. <laughs> there we go. And it's fixed. So yeah. Oh, I love Arkansas when we used to live there when I was younger. <coughs> yeah, I showed Mary the picture from the one in Arkansas, too. 
It's such the cutest little house. <laughs> Yeah, we did find a, uh, I think it's 13 acres. Um, it's like within, I think, 10 or 15 minutes of Mary. Oh, I had a car accident um, in October. I was in a car accident. That's why I haven't been live. Um, and I start physical therapy on Monday. Um, I, it was me, my mom, and my twin sister, and I was in a car accident. Pixie, quit playing with your dish. It's not going nowhere. Seriously. Yeah, that one in Arkansas just really spoke to me. Oh, it did. It just was like, yeah. But the one that we found that's not too far from Mary, it's got, I think it's 13 acres. It's all fenced in. It's got a horse barn, um, an arena, a horse arena. Like, it's just a small area. Um, but it's got like a six or seven stall horse barn. And then... Um, <laughs> Um, I think, um, one of them was in Guy, Arkansas that we seen, and the other one is, let me look really quick and I will show you, or tell you. <coughs> um, let's see here. Um, it is... <clears throat> let's see one is called okay yeah this one is in guy um it says greater guy but i think it's guy is the town but I'll, I'll i'll show you the house really quick it looks so cute on the outside it's definitely um there you go it's definitely rustic looking but the inside is really nice well, it needs work, but the inside's nice. I'm sure it needs a good paint job. But it's three bedrooms, one bath, washer dryer room. Yeah, and um, that one's 70,000. That's the one in Arkansas that we found. It's super cute though. Yeah. It is. It's it looks so rustic on the outside. It's insane. Um I'm trying to think I'm trying to remember. I'll look on the map really quick. <coughs> um Guy, Arkansas is north of Conway. Uh north of Little Rock. Here, I'll bring it up on the map there. It's right in here. And then there's Conway. And Little Rock is right down here. There's Little Rock, so, yeah. Not too far, but it's about a four-hour drive, I think, to Mary's from there. So, <laughs> she says that's a little too far. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not that far, really. It's, yeah, it, it's really not that far. <clears throat> yeah, it's not too far, but it's far. Yeah, about four hours, I think. But the other one that we found is um that one's only like uh 15 minutes or so from mary so but it's got a trailer on there that needs some work but that one's 118,000. so 
I don't know. We're still, we got plenty of time to look, so we're not in a, in a rush. But the other one we looked at is uh, near Republic. And it's um, a three bedroom, two bath. And it's on 13 acres. But yeah. 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 Yeah, Conway, uh, it said Conway was only like a 20 minute drive or 30 minute drive, if that. So. Yeah, I found a couple in Arkansas that we liked. I didn't bookmark all of them, but. Um, but yeah. And here's some Christmas cards I made. Yeah, see, one thing with, like, Arkansas is the fact because um, it's cheaper down that way. The further south is a little cheaper. But here's some Christmas cards that I had made. They just got their own little envelope, and they're in solid bags. We used to live in Manila, Arkansas when I was younger, and we actually got family in uh, Paragol, Arkansas, and Jonesboro. Yeah, we got plenty of time. We got a couple years yet before we're able to move anyway, so. But there is a place not too far from Mary's that I did find, and I told Squirrels, like, okay, we can move here. I get that house, but it looked like a castle. That thing was too extremely huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm not good on, um, yeah, in the winters it would probably be hell. But yeah, these are some Christmas cards that I had made. But we want to be like, I want to have a big garden and some farm animals and stuff like that. I need to send these out, I think. Oh, nice, Anita. Yeah, we got to wait a couple years. I know. Unless I win the lottery, then it's going to happen sooner, but... <laughs> Yeah, like two years, three tops at the latest. Because we got to save money up for a down payment and, you know, all that goody-goody stuff. Yeah, these are the first time I ever did cards. I've never made cards before this. So these are like my first time ever making cards. That one's got Wink of Stella on it. It's shimmery. Thank you. Yeah, I made them for a craft fair, but they never sold at the craft fair because there was like four other people selling cards at the craft fair that year. So they didn't even sell. But those are little little gems that I had. Oh no, Marlena. Welcome back, Judy. And these have glossy accents on them. So it's like 3D right there. Oh, I bet Marlena. <laughs> yeah, these are just simple cards. This one I like because it's kind of manly.
Yeah, I, I just want something where I, I want at least 10 acres because I do want to be, um, I want to have a garden and we're actually going to get some pigs so we can butcher them and then uh, some chickens and I want a couple goats because I, I can't have a hard time drinking milk, but I think if I drink goat milk, I might be okay. Um, and then some quails and some rabbits. So, but yeah, the one place we found was near Republic. Um, it was just on the outskirts of Republic. And then, um, I know what Marlena got you, Mary. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's one thing too. I told uh, Squirrel, like depending on where I where we go to, I do need to be closer to doctors just to be safe. I don't want to be out in the sticks and you know something happen and I'm not able to get to a doctor. So that and if he's working, I don't want to be out in the sticks and something happen and you know I'm by myself out in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. <laughs> Not at all, Marlena. Not at all. I think they're really, they turn out really good for, like, I never made cards before, and I just, I got a paper stack, and I was like, okay, I'm doing this. And so that's why I did. I'll probably, I might put them in the auction. I don't know. I haven't decided, but I might just send them out and just say, screw it, and send them. So, yeah, the, that that one, Mary, that had the 10 acre, or 13 acres with the trailer on it, it's actually not bad, the property and of course we would have to go see it first um before we actually like purchased it but i mean it's got a nice open area and it's already got the barn on there and it's got a nice spot for a garden um there's trees out in the back area the back field but um yeah definitely they're cute <laughs> but yes, Mary, I know what it is. I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping I can get the rest of the journals done before the auction. I pretty much just got to sew all the signatures in. I need like an extra set of hands. Ugh. Oh, I have a whole, um, I don't know where it is. I did a video a couple weeks ago of, uh, um, oh, it's over here. Hang on. No, it's not. Where is it? Oh, I don't know where it is now. Oh, right here. Bah. Nope, that's not it. Where did it go? Well, I was going to show you, I have a, I have a paper pad that is the red truck. I think it's cute. The red truck one is totally cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Right, Christine. Yeah. Yeah, the Dollar Tree here doesn't have much for the um red truck stuff or anything like that i did get a couple um gift bags though with the red truck on it i think it was last year but they have fabric at joann's that has the red truck with a tree in it yeah i did get um a set of stamps today <coughs> for the christmas journals i'm hoping i can get them done in time but so I got this one. This says Merry Everything and Happy Holidays to you and yours. And this was a dollar ninety nine at Joanne's. And then I got this one. Um, yeah, I well, 
on these um i cut the pictures out of the paper pack but the uh the snowflakes were uh a paper punch i have which i have a ton of snowflakes left from them and then some of the like this right here whoops there uh merry christmas to you yes that's a that's a stamp set i have it was a stampin upset which i'm probably going to destash a lot of my stamps um, I have a bunch of Stampin' Up! stuff, stamps that I've never used, so I'm going to be de-stashing that probably next year. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of the stamps, a couple of them. But yeah, I'm probably going to be um, <laughs> yeah, um, I got tons of, yeah, hey, let me go get my box of Stampin' Up! stamps, hang on, you're going to shit. Okay. Holy crap, that's a big box. All right. <laughs> Let me zoom out. Oh no. This is a priority mail box, priority box, and it's a large, which is a 12 by 12 by 12. I have four of these full of stamps. This one just happens to be the Stampin' Up! stamps. And they're all, I've used a couple on some of them, but pretty much they're all like new. I got some from a thrift store, but I have Butterfly Basics, Happy Notes. I have the... I think I have the die cut for this one. Uh, that one. Yeah. I've got the die. The die cuts for that. I got that one. Uh, the birthday one, I actually have the candle punch and the cupcake and the balloon punch that goes with this. I have this one, which is enjoy the little things. Um this one which also you can use the baby the balloon punch for it i don't know i thought about i could put them in my auction but i probably wouldn't get what i paid for them um i have the punch for this one somewhere i have the punch for this one uh this one i used one which is the little things is the only one i've used <laughs> yeah, these are all like, nope. I have the dies to match this one. And then I used one of these, which was thank you. Yeah, thank you and friend, I think is the ones I used on that one. I'm going to have... This one. Yeah, I have some that are retired. 
and some like this one here which was only offered at a specific time that's a special one you can't get that one um, this was a happy home one this one I got at a thrift store this one is the rose wonder and I do have the die set for this one then I got the just married beautiful beautiful ride one um, just for you uh, this one's a bunch of thank yous Oh, wow, Marlena. Yeah, a lot of these are still in the thing. I do have one that says to and from. Yeah, they're expensive. I actually was going to sell them, and so I got... Um, when I got my kit and stuff, I ended up, um, somebody bought a ton of stuff. So I got, you know, deals or whatever, you know, when you're, when you're a demonstrator, you get a discount, but yeah, this was like three years ago that I got them. Uh, this one's like little icon ones. I got that at a thrift store. Um, this is the flower patch. This is like a um a layered one where you layer it. This is one of my favorite ones. The gift from the garden. And this one is <coughs> created by so whenever you created something with their product, you had to add one of these. So yeah. Um, that one, all boxed up, uh, sweet sayings, so just different sayings. I think I have a, I have a couple other ones too. This ain't all of them, I don't know where my other ones are. I have uh, quite a few Christmas ones too. Uh, made with lava, it's a baby ones. Whoops. Um, this was a special one, I think, pedal pusher. And then a rose one. I don't know where my other box is. I have more than another box. I don't know where that's at. Oh, yeah. Um, almost, Judy. That one is actually... Um, Let me go grab it. I just got to sew the signatures. Um, I made that tea dye paper so I could use that in the inside so I didn't have all just like patterned paper in there. Let me go get it. It's so cute. Yeah, here's the ornament one. I have to um, sew the signatures in yet. And I got to make a couple more tags and stuff for it. But um, that's it so far. And then I added this envelope to it. Which I put that on the inside. And then I made tags. I've never shopped from AliExpress. So here's my signatures. Um, well, this one's got to be sewn yet. I got to sew a couple of these pages, but I did all my signatures and I embossed some on some of the pages are embossed. It's the same ornament picture. Like I got the ornament stamp, so that's on a bunch of it. 
And then it's got the back with the envelope there. And then the tag is the same as the tags on the front. This is stitched. This is actually two tags sewn together. I love how these turned out, actually. These are my favorite part in the book. <laughs> and then I stitched around. I sewed around this and put the had the fibers up at the top. And these are Velcroed. So they'll stay shut. And I have some paper clips that I made to go with it, which I don't know where they're at. Um, but these are the two signatures. I still got to add a few more signatures in there. but um, Or a few more papers to the signatures. Uh, like this one's sewn around it. It's a, a tuck spot on the side there. That one's sewn. And it's got some tea dyed music paper. Uh, ledger paper. Oh, here's the truck. Oh, well, that's not a truck. That's a car. That's the old-fashioned car. <laughs> but yeah, so I just got to sew the signatures in, add a couple more papers to them, and I have to sew, do this page. I, I'm going to sew a belly band. I'm going to go around it with a, a zigzag stitch around it and have a belly band there. But yeah, so that's that one's almost done. Then I just got to sew them in. That's pretty much all that's left on all the journals is sewing them. And then I got to do the spider one yet. And I got all my papers made for the other spider. For both spider ones. That's why I told uh, Mary. Um, I can do covers and other things. And make the pages and stuff. But I just have a hard time embellishing everything. So, I think what I'm going to start doing is just making blank journals with the pages and, you know, but not as far as with all the ephemera in it, um, and just sell them that way. Because I'm, I'm just not very good with the ephemera part. I have ephemera for them, but I just, I get stuck with the ephemera. So, um, but yeah. And then it's got the tie. Just, if I can figure it out how to tie double, it'll happen. But this turned out really good. And this was done with the napkins that Judy gave me. So I, I really love how this turned out. <coughs> yeah, my sewing machine I got at uh, Joanne's, like, shoot, it was, um... Marked down on clearance or it was on sale. I think it was on sale. I only paid like 40, 50 bucks for it. But, um, it's a singer. I'm going to use that one as far as for journaling. And if I ever get a new one, that's just strictly going to be for my, um, other projects. And then I got my blue rose one here. Which, I have the perfect charm for it. I got this charm. It actually was from a necklace, and I took it off the necklace. And it's going to go with the book, because it matches. Perfect. So that's going to go with this. Yeah, the one sewing machine you don't want to get is the We Are Memory Keep Your Stitch Happy one. I heard there's a lot of bad reviews on that, from what I understood. So, that's not one I would get. Um, Walmart has them at a pretty good price. And if you go to Walmart and you pull up that machine online and it's cheaper online than what it shows on the, um, at the store, as long as you show them at the checkout, they have to give it to you for the price at the, as the online one. <clears throat> so yeah, but pretty much I just got to sew all the signatures in. This one's almost done. I'm actually going to add black paper. The black paper that I did, you guys. <laughs> this is what... This is only half of my black paper that I did. 
um, when I dyed all my paper. But I'm actually going to take some of this and put it in with these. Um, I think it'll add a little more contrast to it to be different color to help it. So it won't be as bad. Oh, yeah, this is only like a third of my paper. I have more. Um, I did, I dyed 380 pieces of black paper, or pieces of paper black, I should say. <coughs> That's only, there's some more of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I got, I got a, um, I got my big kick or whatever it is, but, um. But yeah, and my tea dye papers are gorgeous. <coughs> I do gotta get yours done, Mary. I gotta send you yours. So these are the tea dyed papers, and these are ones I'm gonna put into the. Um, I'm gonna use some of these to go in that other journal. Whoops. They're gonna go inside this. I'm gonna put some tea dye papers in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, these turn out, I love how these turn out. I'm going to, I got to do some, I'm going to send some to Mary. Mary wants to buy some from me, <laughs> but look at the edge. Like it's, they're gorgeous. I love my tea dye papers. They turn out so pretty. But yeah, so I'm gonna put some of my tea dye papers in them. But in the in the blue in the bros journal, I think I'm gonna end up adding some of the black paper in it like I did my other one. So here's the red one. Um this one I got some tags I wanna add. And I gotta finish the signatures. But um I'm going to add some more black paper into this, but this is just, I, I don't think I'm going to add much to this. I think I'm just going to do it as a, you know, I'm not going to embellish it much. I'll add a couple tags and such for tuck spots or something. But as far as anything else goes, I don't think I'm going to do too much more with it. Um, I'm just running out of time. The not being able to do nothing for a couple weeks really killed me. So uh, which one, Judy? These? Oh, I have a table. Um, we have a four, or uh, it's like two foot, two and a half foot wide by five foot long. And I just stick it out in the kitchen because that's where I tea dye. And then I just stick my stack in a cake pan and sit it upright so it drains down to one side. And then just every half hour so I go out and split the stack and lay it out and keep just keep splitting the stack. It dry within like 24 hours. So... Judy, what... um. What were you asking was napkins? <clears throat> these are these are paper paper. Oh, speaking of napkins, I got new napkins today. Um they're actually the truck. Oh, where did I put them? They're super cute. Oh, here they are. Look what I got today. Are them not cute? <clears throat> yeah, the Rose Journals are, this is a paper pack. It's called, um, uh, what was it called? I don't remember what it's called. I gave a package of it to Mary. Um, it kind of, it's like a generic Twilight version. I don't remember what it was called. 
But, um, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I don't even remember what it was called now. Uh, Forbidden or something like that, I think. I don't remember. But these are, like, I love these. But I need to go through this, and I'm, I got a rose stamp, and I'm going to stamp the rose on there and um, use some of the uh, embossing powder to make it pretty. The same with the blue. I got um, I got some blue embossing powder I'm going to use also. Yes, yes, Kiki, that's it. Immortal, yes. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of it. But yeah. It's a gorgeous paper pack. It is gorgeous paper pack. I need to go through my stamps because I have a lot of stamps and I don't even use them. Like, <clears throat> it's so bad. I really need to de-stash because I just don't use them. Yeah, this is the journal I did on the live stream the one night, Judy. Um, a while ago. I just got to finish it. And I've got somewhere... There's, um, I have a black rosette flower, like rosette lace that's going to go on the back. And I've got these red roses that are going to stick onto it. So this will be really pretty when it's done. <clears throat> I know, Kiki. <laughs> oh, yeah, Judy. Um, I came across a really old, um, antique one. Oh, I love sewing, like, I want, I would love to have a long arm, but, oh, yeah, Wendy, oh, my gosh, organizing is a pain, I've been trying to organize my craft room since I moved in here, which has been a year, in a couple days, I got, I don't even know where I got these, um, in a local grocery store, I got these. I'll send you some in the mail, Laura, because I'm sure as hell I ain't going to use all those. Uh, Judy, uh, we have a card table, uh, like a, it's like a folding table. Um, it's black. It's what we used to craft on before we got this desk. Um, it's five foot or so by two and a half foot, and I just have it set up in the kitchen. And then once I have my paper, I'll show you how I do it. I'll move this shit out of the way. Um... So I'll start with like a stack when I put my paper into the the water or tea or whatever I'm using I do about a stack like this at a time maybe about 15 10 15 pages depends and I'll stick it in there and I'll push it down into the mixture I let it go in there and sit for a while and then I pull it up as careful as I can and I pull it up and I hold it with both hands and I just let it drain and then I'll flip it around and I push it down in there again and then I hold it back up and let it drain and then I lay it into a glass cake pan that I have and I'll carefully spread it apart and then I put it back into the liquid and I just keep doing that and then I take all my my stack and I just lay it into the cake pan and then I just keep you know doing the whole process sometimes I'll do one or two sheets at a time or I'll do a whole stack at a time you know um, that's why some of these are darker is because they were done differently, um, which I like the effects that I get. So it just adds character. Um, and then you, um, I have a cake pan, so I just like have it. So this is my cake pan and I got these sitting in there. Whoops. Ugh, get back here. Um, and I just, I have the cake pan tilted so that way all the, the wetness, the liquid is going to the bottom. And sometimes it'll puddle up down at the bottom and I just squeeze it to push all the liquid out. And then I'll tip the pan up to dip it, to drip it down into the other pan I'm soaking in. And then I just let them sit in that cake pan once I'm done. I let them sit in that cake pan for a couple hours, draining all that liquid down. And then once that's done, I 
got my table cleared off and I usually put down um, a tablecloth like a um, just one from like Dollar Tree or something um, and I lay it out because with this I didn't want the black to die on my table which it didn't matter because it's a black table so I really didn't care after a while um, but I would just lay them out at first I had a stack so I would have my couple of stacks say like this is my stack so I put these on the table like that every half hour or so I would go out and check and then I would just split my stack and I would you know have like four stacks so then after a half hour I went out and I split the stack again so that gave me six stacks so every time I split the stack when I went back out I would split that stack in half and I just kept doing that and I would flip the stack over you know and pull it apart and just I just kept doing that throughout the day and then usually it dried pretty quick because I have a register vent in my kitchen um it dried pretty well um and fairly quickly um and whenever I felt some that were like pretty much they were dry um and not like sopping wet or damp I would just stick them off on the table or the counter away from all the rest of them and I would just loosely lay the paper on top of each other so then when the next set was drier I just kept doing that so then when I went to bed I took all of them that weren't dry yet and I would slowly peel them apart into sets of three and I would just I just had them laying across the table in different random positions and by the time I got up they were all pretty much dry so yeah Oh, the ornament tail. Yeah, those, that was part of the napkin that was left over. Yep, I'm sorry. Totally confused on that. Yes, Judy. I took a file folder and made my tags. And then I just glued the napkin on top. And I used washi tape up here. And then, then on this tag, I did the same thing. And then I glued it to another tag on the back and then I added the washi around it this is washi tape and then I stitched before I added the washi tape I ran a stitch around it good night Marlena thanks for coming in sweetheart I miss you I can't wait till we all hang out again And then I added some of that red, uh, red metallic and white string baker's twine I had with a gold metallic ribbon. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to bed here soon too because my mom is gonna be here in the morning to take a. We're going to a craft show tomorrow for a couple hours. But yeah, this was what was left over from that napkin. <laughs> and I had that other Christmas one too, which is in the other room. I don't, I didn't bring that one out here, but that's in the other room. I have the other Christmas journal one. But yeah, I love how this one turned out. Like it, it turned out really good. It feels cool because of the textures on it. But yeah, I'm going to go through and add some of my tea dyed papers in there. I might add a couple of the lighter colored black pages in there. So, um, it's not just all one color like that. I didn't add many of the design papers on this one. I have a few in there, but... Oh, thank you, Miss Judy. And now that, oh, that's not, well, I was going to say now that that's dry, the dot there, but it's not. So tomorrow I will add some more glitter on that to make sure it's dried. But yes, tomorrow, today, because it's Saturday now, tonight, <laughs> I haven't been to bed yet, so it's still tomorrow for me. Um, I will go live Saturday, tonight, tomorrow, whichever day you want to say it is. And I'll be showing how I did my unicorn ornaments. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it.
but I was asked how to make this. So what I'm going to do tomorrow when I get home with my mom, I am going to make all my unicorn horns up and get those baked. These are clay. Uh, it's made out of the clay, and I'll get those all baked up, painted, or glittered, whatever I'm going to do with them. Um, that way they're ready to go. I'll have all my ears done out. And I did order some paper flowers to use for these. But for some reason, they're not coming for another week or two. So I was not happy. So I had to go out today and get some um, little rosette ones. Which were the same as these, which I didn't want uh, ribbon ones. I wanted actual paper ones for it. But we're going to use the ribbon ones. So I'm going to show how to make these tomorrow. And I used vinyl for the eyes. You can use a Sharpie or a paint marker if you'd want, but I have cut out a bunch of them. So that's what I'll be using as these for the eyes. I have some gold eyes and some black, but um, I'm probably just going to do silver and gold horns. I'm not going to do, you know, like a certain thing, but I got yellow, green, purple, blue. Um, I don't remember what other colors, but those are the colors that the bulbs are going to be. But I'm going to show how the process of how you go about to uh, glitter the inside, um, which there's a million videos on YouTube on how to do that. So I'm just going to be showing it how I do it, how I learned from one of my friends on Facebook. Um, and these are the flat. These are disc ornaments. They're not the round bulbs. These are disc ornaments. Um, so yeah, that I'm just going to show how I, how I learn, how I do it. Um, but I'll be doing that tomorrow night. So probably I'll post in my, uh, Spanky's Crafty Corner. I'll post in the group. Probably I'm thinking I'll probably go on cause he'll get home around five and we have to eat dinner. So I'm thinking around 7 PM Eastern time is when we'll be. I'll go on and I'm going to have squirrel help because if he's feeling better, if he's not feeling any better, I'm, I'm probably not, but he'll probably hit, sit here and, you know, and assist me as I need it, which he's pretty good about doing. So, um, and I did get, I was given a rack. There was a lady in a group who said that she was going to, she had some Christmas stuff, um, that she wanted to give to somebody who was doing a Christmas journal. And I had commented that I did a video on YouTube of a Christmas journal I was working on. And next thing I know, like three weeks later, she had sent me a rack. So I am going to add some of this stuff is going to go in them Christmas, this, these journals. I got to add this stuff into these journals. So I'll show you what she sent me. So I got this little gift bag, which I am going to put in the journal. And she sent me punch outs of snowflakes, Christmas tree, reindeer, and snowmen. And then she sent me this, which is just folded up. It's, it's in half. It's like a circle tissue paper, I think. Super cute. And then this is the card she sent me. And she sent me a bunch of tags. So this kind of stuff I am going to put in. These are from cards. She cut these out of Christmas cards. Um, so she sent a bunch of this stuff that she cut out. So I will be adding this stuff into them journals. I forgot all about it until I just seen it sitting there. So yeah, super cute stuff she sent me. Um, this is all from a card. Super cute. And some Santa tags. These ones will be cute in that other Christmas journal one I'm doing. I need to get a tag punch like that. I need a, a, a top punch like that. And some snowflakes. Which is just out of cards that she sent. So it's super cute. Circle punch. She sent a bunch of stuff that she had punched out. So I'm definitely, I gotta add some of that. And then this says... Naughty or nice decisions, decisions. Super cute. It's just an envelope. 
And then this bag. Yeah, um. Oh, yeah, Kiki, I can do that. What color? Do you want black? Um, I'll get with you tomorrow or Sunday or Monday or something. Um, because I have, like, there's, like, 20 different eyes that I can cut. So I'll send you a picture and you can tell me which ones you want to, um, want. And then, so she sent me this bag, which I thought this bag was totally cute. So this bag will go in there, too. And then from the punch outs that she did, she just sent me the skins from it, basically. So these will make cute stencils, too, for inks. So, and then this giant tag, which I'm keeping this tag. Or is it two of them? Oh, there's, oh, there's two. Maybe I'll put one in each journal. Huh, those are cute tags. So, yeah, I thought that was so sweet. So I will be adding some of this stuff into them journals. Um... But yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Judy, because I have a gas oven. And I'm so afraid to dry paper in there because I'm afraid it's going to catch fire. So, um, just laying it out on the table. And they're crinkly. Like, I mean, they're, they're not like the sounding you get when you, like, um, I have some that I've done in the oven when I lived in Pennsylvania. Um, because I had a electric stove there, but here I have a gas oven, but I mean, there, there you got wrinkles and they're, you know, they got, they got crunchiness to them. I don't mind not having the crunchiness. Um, but they still like, they have the good, you know, they look the textures on the edges. Like it's, it's gorgeous. I, I don't know how to explain it any other way, but the wrinkles and stuff. I mean, it's just whatever preference. And just air drying them, it works. And you can put them in a, um, uh, you can lay them down onto, a, a, like, a flannel sheet even, an old flannel sheet or a sheet. You can lay them on that and, you know, press it down into it. And this, the sheet's going to soak up all the liquid, so you could do it that way also. I mean, it's just whichever way you, you know, whatever way works, you know. But yeah. Oh, I should marry. Yes, I think I will. Whoops, almost dropped that. Yeah. I have a tab punch, but it's the um other tab. Like I just have like the like the square tabs punch. I hate these things on those. I have this punch to do that, but I don't have like the tops of these or Nothing, but there's it's super cute, and I have a um Tim Holtz die that makes envelopes like the coin envelopes. I have a Tim Holtz die that does that, so I'm probably gonna do some of those up, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think they're cute tags. I like how long they are, they're they'd be perfect to go in here too. Yeah, definitely. I might put them in here. That'd be cute on um, one of the pages or something. Yeah. Yep, they're cute. See, they slide right in there like that. That'd be cute. Or even up in that. Yeah. Or I might use them in one of the other journals. But yeah, this is, I love how these stick up. I, I'm not going to add a bunch of frilly stuff sticking up on the tops, you know, or I might add a couple. I might use this tab punch and make some tabs off from the edges of this, but I'm not going to do a whole bunch of, like, I'm not going to add, I don't really usually add lace to them. I have a couple that I've done like that, but um, I just really like the whole natural look of it on this. But, because I, I just love how this has turned out already. It's just, this one's, it's gorgeous. I love this book. <laughs> oh, Kiki, that's funny because, um, Pixie, when she goes to, when we go to bed, she curls up behind my knees if I'm on my side or between my legs if I'm on my back or in the small of my back 
if I'm on my side and it oh my gosh it drives me nuts because I don't get no sleep because of her but yeah and I am gonna put something over the spine after I get the signatures sewn in so but yeah Oh, do they, Dana? Oh, I'll have the the this one for like this punch, like this tab or tag, whatever tab tag. <laughs> oh, I'll have to check next time. Right now we're on a um we're not spending no more unless it's absolutely needed. Like I had to go get that fabric today for the ornaments, but I'm being paid for all that stuff. But um Squirrel's gotta get new tires on his car. So that's like five hundred dollars right there. And that's gonna be our next expense besides Pixie getting fixed. So um we're not um spending much in the next few months. Because he's got to get tires soon. So. But yeah, so tomorrow I'm going to head off here, you guys. But if you guys want to see how these are done. um, And I got other ornaments I'll show tomorrow also. But um, if you want to see how they're done, be sure to tune in at, I'm going to say around 7 p.m. Tomorrow night. Eastern, Saturday. And then. I'll have everything prepped and ready this way. I have the ornaments ready. I'll explain the process, but I'm going to have some ready to go as I do the steps. So that way it, it's not a long process. So, but yeah. Oh, sweet, Dana. I'll have to check out, check for that. I'll put it in my wish list I have going on. <laughs> But anyways, I am going to hop off here for the night, you guys. <coughs> I want to thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad to be back. And I'm doing better, but still slow getting there. But thank you for tuning in with me while I made this. And I hope you guys make some and post them if you do. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I did a video last night. I uploaded a tutorial on how I made my clay roses. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yes, Kiki. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, yeah, I'll do the I'll um I'll have some pre made. Um so that way I don't have to wait for them to bake and glue and glitter and, you know, all that. Because I like to add the glitter on them because I love how the glitter looks on them. Um. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But, yes, I will have some pre-made. But I'll also show how I made them. So that way you know. I'll do each of the, I'll do the, the whole step. But I'll already have pretty much, like, I'll have stuff already done. So that way, you know, we don't have to wait for that process. But, yes, I definitely will be doing that. <laughs> oh, I am so glad you guys hung out with me and I thank you so much. And I hope you learned. <laughs> and Laura, I will message you with um all the directions on the ornament so you have it. Uh, you know, I'll write it down, not write it down for it, but I'll type it out for you and stuff so you have it. And then um I'll get your address and I'll send you a couple of those napkins cuz they are too cute. So yeah. <coughs> uh tomorrow I'll do a giveaway. I think tomorrow or Sunday. I have to see what I'll probably we'll probably do it Sunday night. Um we'll do a giveaway. I still got a couple other giveaway things that we got to get sent out. Um But I'll probably give a couple like we'll do a couple um of these and I'll probably do an ornament or something on Sunday. 
So, or even maybe tomorrow night, one of the two. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you hit that little bell, you'll be notified when I upload or go live when YouTube lets you know. Because sometimes they don't always let you know. But I usually post in my group, in which you can find the link to my Facebook group in the description box below. Or Nightbot here will post it. Um, I think he'll post it, maybe. Uh, you can join the group if you haven't already. And then um, I always post in my group. I post in Mary's group, Inspired Art. So if you haven't joined that one, check her group out too. It's awesome. And um, I always usually post in the flock and on another one too. So, but yeah, love you guys. Thanks for hanging and I will see you tomorrow night. So, poof. I'm out like a snowflake on a snowy afternoon.